Okay, here we are. We're only 12 minutes late. That's pretty impressive. 13 minutes late if you look at that monitor. Which is weird because it's the same computer. Huh. Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome. Uh, so today is very special. Um, Okay, for a variety are. of reasons. We're One is uh, not in the sculpting studio. I'm on the computer, look at that monitor. and we're working on this beautiful book cover, the same which, as you can see, is um, hi everyone, a paperback hi, book cover template. Uh, That's the name of our book. So today, we're is really very excited special. about it. It's subtitled um, 5.5 inches okay, by 8.5 inches reasons. book. One is uh, so not in the sculpting studio. It's good to put, the, to put computer, in your title that your book is a book. And we're yes, working on this beautiful um, cover. So this is this is my mom, is, uh, and she's going by Rose Foreman for back the for the uh, this series the of books, books. So today, for the Tales from Telfar. It's subtitled 5.5. What I've been doing over the past. Too long uh, is um, to put in your title creating your an asset yes. that is going to be the main. Uh, so uh, this is this is my mom, uh, and she's focus going by of the Rose cover, and that is a bust yeah. of Beaumark, who is the, the main character from the book. And, um, let me see if I can find way to too long. Kevin Larkin, is, hello, um, welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Set that is going to be the main, um, and you're uh, from the mom. UK. Uh, focus of the cover. And see if I can. Is sorry, uh, we have a, a new con well, computer configuration that I've been setting up over the past ten minutes. That's why we're late. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to see all the important things we need to see. Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. That is going to be Demi, hello. And you're from uh, Mom. Demi is from. <coughs> oh. Double sound. Uh, I'm not surprised. And you got me talking with you. Okay. Desktop audio. Setting up over the past ten minutes. Boom. Okay. Tell me if that fixed it. Cecil says, got an echo from the other computer. Yeah. Okay. So if that's fixed now, let me know. Um, Demi is from the island of, oh shoot. Is it Crete? Are you from Crete? One of the, one of the Greek islands that isn't actually part of Greece anymore. Um, <laughs> all right. So here's what, here's what we're doing. This is the the bus that I've been working on, I'm just going to show you here. It's a it's a CG render. I, I um, sculpted it in ZBrush, um, and I rendered it out in a variety of materials. I have four different options here. I've got a a marble one. I also have them posed slightly differently in each of these. If if I like a particular um, a particular material of the sculpture but a different pose I can go back and re-render it you know in the material or, or the different pose that I like so there's marble there's gold there's uh, kind of copper and uh, bronze ish these are all ishes right I'm not an expert at rendering so these are my closest approximation at these materials I kind of like copper just because he does have copper colored skin and red hair yeah that was certainly something uh, i'm certainly drawn most to the copper specifically for that reason um one but of the all of them look good and the marble one lets you know specifically this is not an illustration this is a sculpture you know a photograph of a sculpture yeah that is important um i don't want people to look at this and think wow this sure is a crappy picture of a person <laughs> this doesn't look real at all um <laughs> so yeah that is something we need to avoid uh let's see anyone saying uh onassis says the sound hey, is fixed thank you uh demi hey, says Kevin. cyprus is that what i said did i say cyprus no i said crete you said sorry crete. okay cyprus um dotty hello my mom dotty dotty my mom um <laughs> Demi says you're gorgeous. That is true. Okay, so uh, the other the other thing that I'm trying to accomplish with this cover is to set a precedent for all the covers that take place in the Tales from Talifar universe, um, which is having the protag a bust of the protagonist as the cover. Because as an artist, it's what I can do. There are lots of things that I wish I could do, 
but I'm just not good enough to do those things. Or I could pay hundreds or thousands of dollars to pay one of my friends, thousands. you know, yeah, thousands, you know, professional illustrators to do a professional illustration. But I feel like with my skills, I can get away with doing this for every book we have. How many books have you written? Well, I'm on 10 now. Wow. Okay. So, so she's on book number 10. They're all in various states of completion. This, this one is the one that is almost done. I still this hope... is the one waiting for you. Yes, this is the one that all my illustrations, which I'm finishing up now. I only have two more left. I'll show you guys. This is, um, this is a page of some of the illustrations uh, that I've been working on over the past week or so of various characters in the book. Um, here's, here's some other ones. But yeah, so these... These uh, novels will have lots of illustrations for me, and then obviously, a, hopefully, a, a gorgeous cover. You know what I like? I think I really like the idea of the bus taking up most mm -hmm. of the cover, even, you know, even going past the trim size. Although sometimes places like Create Space won't let you do that because they don't really? want to trim off part of the picture. Um, That's weird. Well, so I've, I've had friends with that problem. And then, you know, putting the title on, I don't know how you feel about putting, like, the title on his brow and, yeah. and you know, having the words actually cover part of this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's the kind of thing we're going to be experimenting with today is just moving words and changing fonts and trying different sizes, different backgrounds, all this kind of stuff. So, uh, Onassis says he looks like the model Tyson Beckford. And Tyson Beckford is apparently a model. Let's see. Yeah. Tyson Beckford. This guy. Ooh, he, he's good looking. Uh, yeah, he actually does look <laughs> good looking. <laughs> okay. We'll just say I was using him as an inspiration. Uh, some guy I never heard of. But uh, yeah, thanks for pointing that out. It's. You know, it's it's really good to um, to know the stuff that you're accidentally copying. I find that I run into this a lot. The classic example is uh, before I came to work at ArenaNet 14 years ago, uh, I developed this race of creatures called that eventually became known as the Crewless in, in my Tales from Telefall world. And I had them as basically polar bear centaur Vikings that would sail on big iceberg ships and go, you know, torment the, the um, coastlines of the north. And I came to work at ArenaNet and literally a year later, I, I don't, I'm pretty sure I never told anyone about this idea. Our art director, Daniel, makes this illustration of these giant polar bear people on giant icebergs with huge sails that go, you know, like... So, yeah, so, so it, it's good to be able to uh, pivot when that sort of stuff comes out before your stuff, even though I had the idea first and I could rightfully... Well, ideas float in the air. I don't they know do. if there's ESP or something, but like every scientific advance, one person gets the credit, but there were behind him yeah. nine or ten people who were going to announce, but waited too long to announce or discovered like a day or two after. Yeah. And... Um, it's almost chance who gets the credit for a particular discovery in, or advance in technology. Yes. Aletha Baki says, I have so many arguments with CreateSpace. Yeah, apparently CreateSpace is not uh, the greatest for creators. Okay, so let's, let's look at some of our options here. Um, I started out yesterday, I made a... Um, I'm, I'm just kind of working with this gold one at the moment. Uh, I've slapped this text on. Let's let's put one of our backgrounds on. Um, so I had something like that. Uh, I, I posted this on Facebook and Twitter to get feedback from people. Um, well, it wasn't this exact thing. Actually, I can show you guys exactly what I posted in case you haven't seen it um it's this so um as a come on why, why is there a giant box there go away box okay <laughs> 
So this is like very rough preliminary, just first stab, just throw all the stuff at the canvas and say, well, is that a thing? And it guaranteed the first thing you do is not gonna be a thing. So, and that's fine, that's by design. So anyway, the, the important elements that I need are like Tales from Talafar, because this is the series that all these books are gonna be under. So this is like the equivalent of Star Wars, and then there's the thing underneath it. Um, the thing that complicates this a little bit more is we've got, at the, our first books uh, set of books is a trilogy. It's supposed to say Scarred King 1. I'm not convinced that it should do that. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Um, <laughs> I put book one, Exile. Either way, it's going to have to have to go yeah. from a, you know, title and then colon or whatever subtitle. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll hash that out. We'll, we'll try it both ways. Okay. And, uh, and then, you know, author names are important as well. Um, a friend of mine did this little rearranging, which which definitely looks better, but it leaves out the important uh, subtitle and puts the Tales from Telefar in the wrong place. That I think that would, yeah, it's. I, I'm almost certain that Tales from Telefar needs to be up the at the very, very top. top. It does. Yeah. It does. Um, and and I got other good feedback, uh, especially from my friend Jennifer. She said that um, basically the eye is drawn away from the title and down to the bottom of the book because you, you make eye contact, you follow the jagged scar that takes you to the lips and the neck and then it's like this arrow pointing down. And also my mom does not like this this bust element where the where the I've, I've, it's cut I'm off okay like with that. it now. Okay. She's okay with it now, but we'll see. If if we go with a uh, very close up um such as uh such as this, you're not right. going to see it regardless. Right, right. So, um, the other thing before we really start getting into the weeds that I think is important to do is to um, is to uh, what is the word for when you look at your competitors or it's or the yeah you're you're checking out the market you're seeing what is out there currently. Comps. Yeah. In real estate, it's comps. Okay. Um, Aletha says, I like book one, Exile, better. Okay. Oh, stab me in the back, Aletha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Aletha is my cousin, and uh, she has self-published how, how many books now? Eight or nine, a ton. So she's got a lot of experience in She's in amazing. Area. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if you want to check out her work, you should go to Aletha... Or AJ Baki uh, yes. on Amazon. I think yes. it's the best place to find that. A dot J dot B A K K E. Baki. Yes. Okay, so let, let's look at some other covers. So the... Oh, look, you found one with a bust. <laughs> yeah, so. A sculpture, yeah. So I, I, look I, at that. I did a search, uh, you know, for book covers. At first, I typed in award winning, award winning book covers. Then I did YA award-winning book covers right and i did fantasy and sci-fi book covers there you go and then just for kicks i was like you know book cover sculpture bust just to see what kind of books have yeah. sculpture busts on them look at that so apparently there is a novel that has a, <laughs> a bust I, and i really like that it's it's very classy it's um it it does look a little textbooky to me. That that's another thing. Uh, uh, several of the comments mentioned was this, this looks like looks like a history book or right, right. The book the the cover needs to convey that this is a science fantasy adventure type right. book aimed at gamer guys and geek girls. Yes. And so if the book as beautiful as that this cover is, this would not say that. Right. And so, well, it, it's interesting. It actually specifies up here a novel. Like, <laughs> <laughs> clearly, they got some focus group testing, and people. You know. I, well, maybe she's afraid somebody will think it's something about the moon. Well, I would look at this and I would think, oh, this is a this a, is a, a book, yeah, a historical yeah, a history book of one about of the gods or a history of maybe yeah. it is, maybe it's a novel of 
a person at that time in Greece. Oh. Um, classical Greece. Quiet Storm says, talented family. Yes, yes we are. Uh, Onassis says, you're a really cool dude. Got your mom chilling with you. That's great. It is great. It's super great to have family that you love and do projects with. How fun is that? That's the best thing. Uh, Demi says, definitely would uh, do not use the C render with the bronze bust. Mismatched elements, even though they are both renders. You know, that's a point. Um, are you talking about just realism because it would corrode? <laughs> well, <laughs> well... Because you've got a photograph, and then we've got a sculpture, and um, okay. well, she she said they're Mismatched. both they're both renders, um, but this is just so I just grabbed a bunch of photographs off of Google. Yeah. I would not use these actual photographs because they're the well, I wanted intellectual you to property use, of someone else. I wanted you to use that free picture I got off of Pixabay of it kind of looked like lava with red cracks because I don't like white covers. Right. But that's me. Um, yeah, you'll see when we start going through the other covers okay. that I, I love white covers. So we'll, we'll have to find a compromise. I guess we'll have to have gray cover. Well, um. <laughs> uh, it's your universe. I have to bow to your final decision. <laughs> to my, to I my might whims. Make, I might make a lot of noise first. Yeah. Uh, Demi says, are they not? No, so so these, uh, let's see, I'll get rid of this and just show you some of the backgrounds that I just randomly grabbed. Um, just, you know, I, I grabbed several different beaches. Um, uh, some just like, suit, you know, there's just a color ramp just to see so it's not absolutely plain. That's the one level up from being absolutely plain. Uh, some kind of pattern type stuff. Yeah, and all of this, the idea is not to say, not to actually use this asset out on the book, but just to generate, okay, what should I do that, that you know, evokes this, or, or this evokes the same thing that I can make myself for the background. Um, I tried some yeah. catacombs. Well, I but... wanted red because that conveys excitement and danger. Yeah, I don't think red will work with any of these. It might work really? with the marble. We'll, we'll, we'll find, oh, I we'll see experiment. what you're saying, because there's not enough of a pop contrast. Yeah, gold and... We'll see. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll try a lot of things. Let's just go back to looking at some of these other covers. Because, um, yeah, we've got this solid green and the uh, yellow that matches the, the title and... It's almost in the, it has the same warmth or coolness, same tone, sort of. Yeah. Aletha is, is screaming, no, white is boring. Ah! <laughs> okay, well, let's let's look at some of the boring books uh, that, that I have that I thought okay. were interesting. Oh, this is not a book. This is a magazine. But yes. I just thought it was funny because it came up when I did a search for books with, with sculpture. It uh, <laughs> and, and I'm going, okay. Now, th this is clearly from the 70s. You know, you can tell from the font, maybe the 80s. Um, but I, I just thought it was, it, like, it's it's a bronze bust staring right at you. So I thought it was worth just, just looking at, torso. at least to laugh. Um, okay, so here we've got... Oh, that's so ugly. Yeah, I think this is terrible. Uh, the... <laughs> the... I, I guess I don't like this color <laughs> well, to begin well, with. Well, I think it's kind of interesting, though. Uh, you know, first I'm looking at those black blotches and think, what? But the title is Contemporary Athletics, and you think about the, the football players with that, that black stripe yeah, under their eyes. So he's, he's anyway. So it, yeah, it's a I, I think the concept is not bad, but boy, is this ugly. Yeah, I agree. Um, but it's a it's a book with a marble marble bust, so it's it's always useful to pull up things and say, hey, let's make sure we don't uh, go in this direction with what we have. So I would say not a solid color for a bracket. Oh, Brandon and Sanderson. Yeah, we'll, wait a minute. That we'll, is we'll get to that. Oh, that's underneath. Or yeah, what? that's that's underneath. I just okay. have them all stacked up here. Okay. okay. So so here's here's this one. So here's a textbook, obviously. So <laughs> it has a sculptural bust on it, uh, plain white background. I actually like Fang uh, sculptures. Um, I... Yeah, I, I don't know that there's much that I would want to pull from this. In fact, I, we probably want to stay away from this as much as possible. Because we want to we... not have textbook vibe. Yeah, we definitely don't want to have textbook vibe. 
so here's a statue on a white background with a very popular author. <clears throat> um, I do love his work, yes. So I'm not in love with that cover. Um, but it doesn't offend me. <laughs> That's good. Demi says, I would go with a lighter type of pattern instead of full picture for the background. The bust is so perfect and detailed and should be the main focus of the cover. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Uh, parentheses, graphic designer. <laughs> hey, I'm really glad to have a graphic designer Thank on you, here. Doctor. Because we definitely are not graphic designers. Um, I, my impulse is very much the same. I feel like the sculpture should absolutely be the total focus and putting detailed stuff behind it will detract from that. But... And this was going to explore everything. Kevin asked any space backgrounds if it's a science fiction book. Yeah, the the problem is this. I I don't know if I made a mistake or not. Uh, it's science fiction, but it reads like fantasy for the first several books because it's it's using technology that's indistinguishable from magic and a loss of technological memory. Um, so I'm not sure how to convey both so that when the science fiction becomes obvious. I don't chase off all the people who prefer pointy spears. Yeah, so the when I was designing this world from the beginning, the idea was I want to make a fantasy world that's scientifically plausible. And so that just kind of pushed it towards science fiction, but that's really only kind of the, the bones of it. All the flesh, everything you see is fantasy. Yeah, that's why I'm calling it science fantasy adventure. Yeah, it's, they are mostly adventure books at the heart of them. They, they're in a fantasy world, but when you dig deeper, you realize, oh, wait, this, all of this stuff actually could be. Like, it's not, there's no uh, dragons with wings that are too small or floating castles or magicians casting fireballs. Well, there's, there's close to magicians casting fireballs, but it's all, it's all technologically based. Okay. Um, but it, it's a long story. Let's, let's not get derailed on that. Okay. Um, okay. So, Covers. so yeah, not, we, we don't want to trick people into thinking this is a sci-fi story. <laughs> I, th it. I think is the point. Um, okay. So here's another one. Um, uh, I like that. So, I mean, th this is Michael Whalen. He's just a brilliant illustrator and, um, huh. they, they put the book one yeah at the bottom i thought that was interesting way to do that is to just make it its own separate thing now i want to put the same thing on top the number the one number new york one. times yeah. best seller <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely do that <laughs> and also brandon sanderson we should put oh, that, that would on. help yeah. that would help that, that would increase sales <laughs> um yeah so the, the the only reason i wanted to bring this up is because it's got this big kind of swirly sky going on um, and obviously it's a best-selling book, so we shouldn't discount that. Um, the, the font is, I think, too fantasy for what we're doing, for the, the Way of Kings part of it. Um, I'm kind of sticking with more, more classic-looking font that can, that can be uh, agnostic to, uh, to genre. Mm -hmm. You don't I think don't, so? I yeah. think I, even the just font has to say what this is. Well, to to a degree. I mean, it's it's not going to be Arial. It's, you know. Uh. <laughs> well, I know it's not going to be Arial. Amy, hey, glad to have you. We're talking about book covers and designing our book cover. Um, okay, so this is um, another primarily light white book cover. Um, it definitely evokes action and adventure, um, but I mean that font is. It, that, what that's is a that? fine font. Yeah, it, but that, it, it doesn't scream high fantasy to to me. Um, I mean, I could see this on a on a a romance cover, you know. I could... No, not no? romance. Okay, no. Okay, well, I I'm not a good enough no. cover or. Um, but anyway, the, this this. Nah, it's just worth having in the in the old collection. Yeah, I. Alitha is saying Comic Sans is the way to go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I was going to do the title in Papyrus, and then our our names in Comic Sans. <laughs> oh. 
Here, here's I another. I still don't understand the hate on papyrus. I realize I'm a barbarian. I love papyrus. No, I, I like papyrus too, actually. But, but you can't use it. You just can't. Um, okay, so this one, uh, again, um, lots of white. But all the books that have have a lot of white on them still have other elements or, or fades or some some kind of illustrative thing going on in the background. Um, hmm. This one also has a tagline on the bottom and then yeah. a little blurb on the front. That yeah, a tagline, a ta I don't, I feel like a tagline could be super useful in, in setting reader expectation mm -hmm. and help because because we have kind of a complex, yeah, well, because there's gonna, there's gonna be the blurb on the back that describes yeah. the book. And, but that tagline is sort of a, a, a interest promoter to the cook. Yeah, uh, so it's used on movie posters all the time. You don't see it on books a lot. I don't know if it's one of those things that's, oh, this is in poor taste, or this makes your book seem cheesy or something, you know. Because it, it could be that. I don't know. Hey, Fat Cat. Welcome. Amy says, I always like more painterly covers as opposed to more realistic styles. All right. Well, you're going to hate what we're doing then. <laughs> okay. Here's uh, more more white stuff. Um, and that is way too fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. That, so... That's fairy fantasy. Exactly. Very squiggly. I like it. Um, yeah, I, I, well, I think it's a beautiful, striking cover. I think that's one of the, but, and I'm, I was also collecting brighter ones just because I feel like going bright is better than going dark. Uh, speaking of dark, let's look at this dark one. Um, why did I, why did I put this one in the collection? Oh, maybe because it had, it had, it has two authors. Um, it has one central focus point and this kind of, and, oh, and the font is, this is this is what I meant by kind of an agnostic f font. I I still say this could work on many kinds of books. Well, it, it it could. My difficulty with it is that it, it the background obscures hallows just a little bit. Oh yeah yeah. Enough that I think in a thumbnail. Um, you might not be able to... Yeah, it's always worth looking at it at this size because that's what you're going to see on your Kindle or, you know... <laughs> oh, now my eyes or, hurt. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, so let's go to the next one. Ooh. Um, oh, nice. I don't remember why I grabbed this. Maybe, maybe it was the font was kind of interesting. Um, oh, it, the the character. It's very it's very similar to the to the to the uh, bust of Beaumark. Um, if I if I could find it, there we go. Yeah, just kind of that. It's it's a you know, he's not quite as much over the shoulder shoulder, but I just thought it was uh, similar enough to worth to be worth saying. Huh? How how does how does this look? All right. I don't like this cover. Uh, what, what I found interesting. <laughs> Good. <laughs> what I found interesting about it was the the radiant uh, elements of the background. I thought that was something that, that could potentially nice. be. Uh, it it wouldn't detract from the sculpture, but it adds some kind of element to it. In fact, what I can do is I can just go and say, let's see, filter. Put that on there and let's see. Uh, blur. Let's just blur the crap out of this. And then I can drag this down. Do, 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 do. Oh, not that far. Okay, put it right here. Kind of that. Yeah, so you get kind of an idea of, huh. you know, it could be a thing. It's worth exploring. Nasir, hello. Glad you made it. Nasir is one of the people who was commenting on the manuscript. Um, the, uh, my So my mom and I were looking over the comments that people have made on... We, we have 
this book in in beta form essentially hanging out on a Google Doc. And if if you guys are super excited about being a beta reader and leaving comments and stuff, uh, you can email me at um, Breath of Life Art at gmail.com and I can add you to the to that beta reader list and you can uh, leave cool comments for us. Okay, back to book covers. And JJ is here. Okay, why did I choose this one? Oh, I chose, I wanted to look at this. So the, all, And all, that also has a very nice tagline at the bottom. It does, doesn't it? A band, a road trip, a gig that maybe doesn't suck. Yeah, boy, those are so useful for setting tone. I I'm really feeling attracted to coming up with a with a, a tagline. Um, but I I also want to research and find out are taglines offensive or cheesy or you know I although okay um, I should point out all the rest of the book covers that we're gonna be going through are award winning. I, I what does that even mean anymore? Because like. People, you know, one person on their blog gives out awards these days. So I, I don't know what that means. But <laughs> hey, I got one of those. That's true. Yeah. Um, so this this one here um, has one solid color background. And the big plus about that is it is very eye-catching. Like, if you see this in a row of books or a row of thumbnails, that's going to stand out. Especially also because it has this very graphic element. Well, having a face in general is going to draw the eye. But then having this huge blast of color also. I don't necessarily think that works Everything for what we're doing. Everything is super easy to read. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this font is, um, uh, what is that one called? It's, it's like Arial, but it's got a little more style to it. Um, anyway, yeah, worth looking at. Okay, here we got almost completely white background. We got a little bit of grunge around the sides. We have a photographic element in the middle, like we have. Um, it's got a font uh, for the, the title that, again, feels agnostic to me. Uh, although the, the title font is clearly fantasy of, of some sort, or at least fantastical. Uh, okay, says Aletha, the haters cover might stand out, but it looks awful. Um, yes, I, I, it's true. I'm not a fan of it. I just wanted to point out, hey, this is this will grab your eye. Kevin said something interesting. The corn circles worked well, but maybe needs to be a different color to the bronze in the foreground. Mm. Yeah, I was looking at that and I was like, but that's a little dark, and and so. Yeah, um, tone it down. So there's a couple different, so you can you can turn the saturation down so it's like more of a, am I on the right though? Yeah, so it's kind of more black and white. Uh, we can adjust the hue so it either like matches more closely. Not that one. Yeah, not that one. So, so this one, but that kind of brings a more monotone. You, yeah. you can go the opposite way so that you're doing um, uh, complementary colors, which the complement to kind of orangey, brassy is kind of bluish. Maybe somewhere, somewhere around there. Put, put it, put, make, make it red. See, see what you red. think of a red. Um, okay. Not pink, red. Oh, I'm getting there. There you go. There's red. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, huh. Um, I don't know now. I wonder what Demi thinks. So, so <laughs> when when you have red and um uh what is that called I, whatever those lines are that are drawing your eye towards something mm -hmm. those are th that's two very powerful things yeah. at the same time and i think if you put two powerful elements behind your primary element you're probably detracting from your primary element yeah. that that's that's my theory um anyway well, let's get back to the other uh, uh, lisa guys. says the blue is pretty kevin says the mint green looked cool hmm. But does mint green say adventure? 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's that, that's the thing is we're we're trying to look good. We're trying to look beautiful. We're trying to look professional. Professional. Trying, Let's go for that. Yeah, we're also trying to look adventurous. So yeah, we want to evoke a, 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 a fantastic event, adventure as well. Okay, here we have another uh, almost pure white, but again, there's an element in there that's not pure white. Uh, it has a very strong central thing that's I think that's really cool. Draws your eye right to it, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. I reposted Lilo's thing, but I am bad, and I don't know how to connect your live stream to this phone. Because <laughs> people are commenting on it. Oh, uh, so if you can you can go to, well, so the address for this live stream is YouTube slash scribe with a Y slash live. Or is it slash stream? Okay, so it is... Oh my gosh, what is it? YouTube? Yeah, youtube.com slash live. No, no, that, that, that's, that's for this not chat. That. Oh, that's different. but not for the phone. Uh, it, it's, it's live. There we are. Yeah, youtube.com slash scribe with a Y. YouTube dot what? So sorry. Dot com. Okay. okay. Slash scribe. That is certainly eye-catching and it has oh. the red that I like. Yes, uh, red is 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 an eye catcher. It's also an eye catcher that a lot of other books use. And so, when you're an eye catcher among eye catchies, uh, no slash live, uh, on right after that. Where did my other window go? There, okay, lost chat. Sorry about that. Okay, so um, Demi says the realism of your bust doesn't work with a flat color background. Would be nice to have something that works with the dramatic light that hits the bust so it doesn't just look like a pick stuck on another pick. Yes, absolutely agree with that. Mm -hmm. Nasir says, glad to finally see your Josh Hello. Mama. Oh, to see you, Josh Mama. That's your Josh Mama. Uh, I've read 60 pages of your book, and I'm totally in love. Excellent. I can't wait to get more of your feedback. Um, yeah, it starts to get really exciting, too. Uh, that there's, a, there's a lot of... well. I love I love the beginning. So we originally we didn't have that long a beginning of Beaumark's childhood, um, but we we went to a a really great. Um, what kind of editor is he? Well, he he'll uh, Jeff Gerke edits several ways. What he gave me was an editorial review, which was sort of a a content edit. Yeah. Okay. So content edit as opposed to like. Fixing, uh, proof, fixing, proof yeah, proofreading. So he gave a lot of really valuable story feedback of like, okay, why is it important that when Beaumark does this, or why is it significant? Why does the reader care? And so all of that led us back to... Uh, his childhood. Yeah, his childhood. So m several chapters were added to his childhood. And... The, the establishment of normal before the call to adventure. Right. And so uh, that's... Uh, but it's also his childhood is is really exciting and has a lot of very emotional ups and downs. Like, it's I literally cried when I read the part about his mom. So Aww. I'm not gonna spoil it, but yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's it's pretty gripping. Anyway, uh, where were we? Um, okay, so so a pick stuck on a pick. A, a bus doesn't work in a flat background. Demi, I don't think you were here when I when we started on these book covers, but check this one out. That's <laughs> yeah. That's the one with the greatest hideous. Yeah. yeah. So we're not going to do that. We we've all agreed we're not going to put a bust on a on a flat uh, apricot. But what what color is that even? Um, it, it, uh, uh, it's the color a, a terrible. It's a shade of peach. Yeah, peach, not apricot. Okay. Uh, okay. Here we have. Oh, but what I really liked about this one, besides having number one New York Times bestselling author. Um, was the the font is fairly normal. There's a few flourishes here and there. I think these are too fantastical for what we're doing. But the little bit of of wear and tear mm -hmm. that are on there, those scratches, um, I think that that helps to bring the font to communicate a little more to the reader. This is adventure. Yeah, I, I like eroded fonts. Um, you can take it too far, and then it, then it, I think it gets cheesy. Um, I also like this style of background, this kind of, this type of grunge. It's it, 
You're, you, you're talking about behind the crow. Yeah, not, behind the not, crow. Not the feathers behind the... No, no, no. Okay. Um, it's kind of a, it's kind of an old vellum kind of look to it. But the, but behind Kingdom itself is a starry yeah. kind of background. Yeah, it's an, it's a, uh, this is just a great design because it incorporates so many elements. It's got this crown, uh, so it's building off of the, off of the silhouette of a raven. It's got a kingdom, it's got a crown, it's got, you know, castles down here. It's, it's a great, it deserves to win an award. It's good. Um, I also thought it was interesting that it's got this, the author name in red on black, which makes it kind of hard to read the author name. Like the, the rest of the text pops out a lot more. Um, here's another tagline when you can't, that can't beat one, the odds, change the, the game. The tagline is great, but again, because yeah, it, it runs lost. across the white buildings and, and crown, you lose a couple letters. Yeah, and I don't, so so this worries me. I'm seeing a trend in all of these covers that I'm looking at, which is that I don't see outlines or, or shadow drop shadows or anything around the, it, like they sacrifice readability to not have that, which leads me to believe maybe that's so, it's a faux pas. It's totally out of fashion. Yeah, I maybe, don't know, maybe every, Demi every cover website I go to, they say, do not use drop letters. Uh yeah, so so we'll have we'll have to we'll play with some stuff. And I don't know why. <laughs> but then they also say don't use papyrus, and I don't know why either. So. Yeah. I think you should use it all the time. <laughs> uh, Demi says I saw that, but notice the contemporary in the title, so it's a totally different style to what you're going for. Yes, JJ says which book you think has the coolest cover ever? Oh, there's no way. The, uh, there's thousands. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Demi says, sci-fi fantasy needs more drama. Yeah, we, we definitely... What, then, then the best? Or then what? Uh, she might be talking about the... We were talking about fonts before. Oh, I see. I, I don't know. Um, so what's the poster for? Nasir is asking. This is... So we're designing the book cover for the, the book that you're reading right now. Amy says, I feel like these books are all ones that I've looked at when searching for books to read. Yeah, well, you know, I did a search for award-winning books, and so they tend to be pop popular books. Uh, this one I just grabbed because, again, light background, not pure white, but light, and more or less a bust of a person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and not outlined. Correct. Hmm. Um, okay, and here's the last one I have, a similar kind of kind of expression, kind of evocative. Now, this one has a very dark painterly background. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the front is painterly. It's all one painting, um, which which makes it nice and um, uh, unified. Cohesive. Cohesive, yeah. And the tagline. Yep, and a tagline. Heads will roll, hearts will be broken. So the only reason that I'm afraid of taglines is we already have so much stuff uh, on our book. And I don't know why my text got moved into a funny place. Let's move it back. Okay. Uh, okay. So we have to say Tales from Talifar. Let me get rid of that super distracting background real quick. Um, and by have to, I mean the the... The plan is to is to have this be a big series, and if it's going to be a series, we need some way to unify that series. Um, so, and eventually, every cover will have a bust of the species that is the main character. Well, the main character. Uh, yeah, but so so for this trilogy, Beaumark's going to be on the first one. Uh, he runs into an antagonist. Uh, well, he oh yeah, the second one's going to be Scola, which is oh, is it really? Yeah, which is his, you know, uh, sidekick is kind of the role he falls into, but that's not really what he is. What he is? He's um, a mentor. Okay, mentor. Um, very very antagonistic mentor. <laughs> um, and then the third one will be Lilk, which is an antagonist he runs into later. So so those will be the three characters for the three parts of this trilogy. Um, so two and humans and one. This for the first time. I have told you this many times. Oh, you have not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's it's why I've been sculpting them in ZBrush. 
Okay, let's see what people are saying. Um, Demi says, more drama compared to the flat graphic style backgrounds. Nessier says, I think the cover should include a canoe. So I have illustrations of a canoe inside the book. Oop, that's not what I want. Um, I don't think... Uh, so I experimented with covers. I can, I can show you here with a variety of styles for cover that were a little more uh of there, it there's the canoe he's writing oh yeah here's here's one of the illustrations that's going to be in the book um of of him writing away from his island on a canoe um the as soon as i find these covers Concepts. What? Apparently, it was a while ago that I did these. Oh, okay. Well, so here was an idea of an illustration that I was thinking of doing, where where Bo Mark is fighting Lilk, and so all of these kind of action-oriented things um, definitely communicate. Hey, this is an adventure book, but also make it feel more like comic booky or like a maybe maybe appeal to a younger audience than I necessarily wanted um, okay so here's here's several cover thumbnail sketches that I was going through um, where you know there's just like here's a close-up of, of Beaumark and there's Scola behind him um, you know there there's some of the, the fantastic world behind him um, all of these things that get really illustrative um, I always came back to, um, do I want to either myself get good enough or pay someone who's good enough to compete with this? And my answer kept being no. I cannot afford to pay someone who's as good as Michael Whalen, and I cannot get myself as good as Michael Whalen. So I'm, I'm a little bit constrained into what I can do for this cover to my particular skill set. So... That that's why I'm going going with a with a bust. Uh, I feel I feel like if you were gonna hire someone, I would tell you to hire Kirk Dupont's of Dog Ear Design. Okay, well there there you go. Shout out to to Kirk. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know his work. Uh, Christy says nothing says adventure like a map on the cover of a book. So a map could be an interesting background. Um, actually, you know what? Let me. Let me just drag one in real quick. I mean, I've I've made plenty of maps. Let me look at my. Um... Could you make it look like the sculpture looks? Uh, That'd be kind of cool. I couldn't make it sculptural. Where? Make it look like it was in bronze. Where Where did my maps go? Uh, in the meantime, I'll read. Aletha says, "I love Scola." Nasser says, by the way, Josh, I'm a graphic designer. I'm very familiar with Illustrator and Photoshop. I can make you some covers next weekend as a sample. Oh. Now, there's an offer. Yeah, I'm always always open to feedback for sure. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll post this on my, you know, whatever we come up with today, I'll post it on Facebook and anyone's free to take it and rip it apart and, and throw it back at me. Reassemble with, the pieces. Yeah. Boy, I'm very frustrated that my map is not... Oh, I, I know where my map is. I can grab it from my website. Hey, guys, did you know I have a, I have a website? And you should all go visit it and leave comments on it. Because uh, the spam bots are lonely. I delete 20 spam email or messages on it every day for no reason. Okay. Tales from Telefar. Look at this map. Oh come on. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna copy this. And I'm gonna paste it in here. Let's scale it up like crazy. So just to just to get a feel for it. Now adventure, yes. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how, how sharp I would want it to be, you know, to, to, because mm -hmm. I wouldn't want it to contrast too much with the thing. 
Um, and then, uh, let's see, I should probably make a, oh, I should put this in. I'd still like the face to be bigger, even if words go across part of it. Yeah, we'll, we'll play with that for sure. Um, so we can do something like put this over that and turn. You gotta close this so I can see the comments. Oh. Not you. Not you. Oh. Ah, okay, thank you. Aletha says, yeah, the map looks nice. Nasser says, I think it's better to have the locations described in the book for the reader's imagination, so no landscape works. Furry Baby says, ooh, I like that, actually. So here, here's a way to kind of combine things. I just laid this this guy over it and set it to multiply so it adds some more of those interesting lines. Anyway, uh, that's a thought. So let, let's see what happens when we take, um, let's see, I need to put this back in the background bucket. Um, when we do the really big one. So The, the one thing that having it that big is going to absolutely demand is that we have some kind of outlining around the words. Let, let's look at what happens when we take the outlining away from the words. Unfortunately, uh, Tales of, from Talifar becomes invisible in that yeah. version. So here we have... Um, I could turn off the effects for all of these. Yeah, and that just gets, yeah, you, even the white gets yeah, lost in that right, much noise. Right. It does make it harder to read. But there's also, you know, there's, um, let's see if I grab. Yeah, if you made the letters red, what happens? Oh, give that a try. Let's see if I turn the full size. Amy says, I like the slightly distressed map idea. Nasser says, Josh, the guy in the cover, is he the scarred king? And the answer is yes. I I said, no, you got you gotta show him without the scars in the first book, because he doesn't have them yet. But he point Josh pointed out that since the title is the Scarred King, it we can show him in the after he's gone through his adventures. Okay, so there is. Mm, that's red. still hard to read. Yeah, but once you put the font on there. Uh, I think having the Scarred King in red is probably a good idea. Scars in red go together really well. Um, also separating it from Book 1 Exile is good. And, and also, as promised, let's see what happens when we say that it's the Scarred King. And did what? you want the number one or no, I? No, no, the, the, the Roman numeral one. And then colon? Or no, I guess Just, you don't need a colon. If, if it's on another line, you don't need it. Yeah. I need to get these guys organized here. And then... Um, okay, so... If we take the book one out of exile... Hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm reconsidering that possibly saying book one, then book two, is more um, uh, easy to grasp the concept than having Discard King with one, Discard King two, which is, was my original vision. Um, but I'm thinking how you said it. Yeah, that Because we want to make it as easy as possible. Yeah. Uh, so when somebody picks up a book so they aren't feel like they were tricked into reading the middle book or whatever. I mean, I always start trilogies in the middle because I get the first book in a series at Goodwill or garage sales or I borrow, <laughs> steal it from somebody's house. And then I have to go back and buy the first one or the third one. Uh, wow. If I like it enough. That's awful. Uh, huh? That's awful. I cannot believe you do that to those poor authors. <laughs> Read their second book first. 
but we want the reader to not feel fooled so it has to become it has to be extremely uh, obvious yes and so th that's probably a good speaking of me it's extremely doing. obvious <laughs> trying to if, if we had a tagline where would it go well <clears throat> i i would prefer it under the names so you'd have to raise the names obviously okay uh, what does the uh, gra graphic designer say okay now um amy says for the larger one you should move the bust to the right there's a pretty unfortunate tangent at his brow oh yes Nasser says, uh, um, I was expecting him to be older. No, he's a kid. Well, uh, Nasser's... 17, 18 for the well, book. Yeah. yeah. And by the time he gets home, he's 19. Okay. Uh, Nasser says, Josh, can you send me the original Scarred King picture? I'm going to work on it in Illustrator. Demi says, Nasser, work on the title, too. <laughs> Bit Green says, I don't know why, but until you said it was the Scarred King, I read Sacred King. I got here late. Amy House says, hi, Bit Green. Bit Green says, hi, Amy. Nasser says, Demi, yes, of course it's going to be a full cover. Actually, I've worked on book covers before. Ah, experience is good. That's, that's good. And then it gets rid of that shoulder thing that I don't like. Yes. Um, you know, while we're just, just randomly changing elements willy-nilly, let's go ahead and change to this random element willy-nilly. So here's a, a different, different angle for them and different material, obviously. Oop. Doing the wrong thing. Sorry. So just so just with that background, I really don't like that anymore. Yeah. So this kind of background would. Uh, what was the? There, there was something white that looked, or. One, one of the book covers we were looking at that had a white. Um, background with a foreground. Well, there was element. that. There was that mm -hmm. green one with the very pale yellow. Uh, that, that, Is that one? the one you were thinking of? No, I was thinking of... Oh, you weren't thinking of the ugly one with the peach background. That yeah. was a white sculpture. So that's it's probably too washed out for what we want. Yeah, if, if, you've, if, if you have a white foreground element, that's your chance to add color, but not that color. So let me let me see if I okay. Let, I'm waiting for someone to say what's wrong with Peach. Let's see what happens if we go if we go um, just ridiculous. Okay, so here's here's marble on the beach. Here's here's a palm tree stuck to his head <laughs> like an arrow. <laughs> bad 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 idea. Yeah, we, sh we shouldn't do that. Uh, here's one where Cliff follows a tangent of his forehead in really awkward awful way. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't think those work well. Um, that's that just crap. I prefer the map to the radiating lines. A I, lot. I think I think I just I don't want marble. I think it's too classic. Yeah, it's just and gonna evoke nothing but Greek uh, philosophers, and that's not not what I want to evoke. So. Let's go ahead and stick a fork in that. Let's look at the copper. Master says, so exactly what's your vision of the book cover? What's the art movement? I don't know what that question means. Um, I think, well, the answer is we don't know exactly what we want. That's what we're trying to figure out right now. Um, and the... I mean, I know what we're trying to evoke. What we're trying to evoke is... Fantasy, adventure, danger. And also, this is a professional real book, not a self-published yeah, yes, yes, piece yes, of crap. Yes. That, you know. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so so we we definitely want to avoid all the standard pitfalls that happen when a non graphic designer non artist writer makes their own cover or hires someone who's a student or not very good or just doesn't know what the what the cliches and tropes to avoid are etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, Aletha says the bronzed is better Demi says that's great Nasser I don't do book covers much but generally speaking the same rules apply yeah. Dottie says the bronze looks much better in my opinion yeah I uh, this is copper. This one is copper. Let's let's look at oh, copper. I thought the copper one was darker in that. Uh, no, this is so. This is the bronze. The bronze is uh, a little bronze. Yeah, that won't work. The the map would need to be another color. Yeah, it would definitely would need a different color for this one. But um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, not that. Okay, just throw throw that in there when we look at this guy and imagine there's something cool. <laughs> Nasser says, "Don't forget to sign my copy of your book when it's finished." You got it, Nasser. Uh, Amy says the red title reminds me of pirates. Um, okay, I mean that's not the the worst thing. His his people are descended from pirates, so. Um. Well, this is a font we want to keep through the entire series. Yeah, the, to, well, to, to, to she's talking the about book. the color red, not the font. Oh. If I understand it. Added. <laughs> <laughs> JG says, add a danger sign to the cover. That screams danger. Go over here. There we go. <laughs> so, there we go. I think it needs it needs a little urban uh, slant to it to really. Yeah. There we go. Uh, okay. Thanks. Thanks for the feedback. We'll definitely go with that. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're gonna sign some physical copies for sure. I'm gonna, uh, I don't know if I told you this idea I had, but I wanted to make a custom book cover, uh, like a special edition book cover that I'm actually gonna cast out of, out of rubber or plastic that goes mm -hmm. over it. And it's gonna have that, that um, emblem of Beaumark on there. And then we can sign it, you know, we can make like a limited dish, 10 of them or something like that. And so, yeah. So you know when we when we take off and this IP is bigger than Star Wars and Marvel combined, uh, <laughs> and then those will be worth a trillion billion dollars. Let's see. Kate says, "No, I love the bronze on bronze. Think about it. Most books are monocolored and they do well." Uh, Kate, I think you're oh, wrong. Oh wait, wait, wait. Uh, some oh for, oh for sure you should sign all of them. Amy says, "Or swords? What's the weapon system in their world? All kinds." Aletha's laughing, and Kate says, bronze on bronze, and Demi laughs at that. Kate, were you not here when we were looking at award-winning covers? Let's let's look at some award-winning covers real quick. Uh, lots of color. Not, I, the, the closest it came to monochromatic was this one, but uh, the vast majority of them, uh, that, that one's very muted, but it's not monochromatic. Um, I mean, I am kind of attracted to, to monochromatic stuff, but I think that's just because I don't have a very good eye for color. Um, but yeah, we're, we're trying to find something that fits all of the, the criteria that we were listing as far as, as evoking adventure, um, it has to it has to be something that we can replicate for all of the books in the series. Uh, it needs to look professional. Uh, it needs to, I, I think, rather maybe maybe better than saying it needs to evoke fantasy or science fiction. We need to say it needs to not fool people into thinking it's something other than science fiction or fantasy. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't want it, them to think it's a textbook. We don't want them to think it's a romance. Right. Um, correct, or mystery. Uh, let's go back to Copper. I, I, I would love to go Copper, so I'm going to work with Copper for a while just because um, he lit, like, this is a genetically modified human to... Uh, and they were modified to to live around equatorial regions of planets, which means they their skin is modified in such a way that it has uh, lots of little reflectors in it. So they actually look semi-metallic. They look copperish, not not literally like they're made out of copper, but they have a little bit of glitter to them. And so and Beaumarks people are kind of coppery, glittery, and then the commoners. Uh, who are golden also on brown. the island are more yeah golden brown uh, glittery, um, and not not twilight vampire glittery. Just <laughs> oh please <laughs> subtle subtle glitter. Anyway, so yeah, that's why I want to be copper. Okay, uh, Dozer says like your channel and your work is awesome. Kate says tell me the bottom font will change. Yes. NASA says, Josh, you can have a logo on the book cover, like if the Scarred King has a, spe a specific sign he wears, or Beaumark's family logo. Extra, that would be the, the medallion he wears yeah. everywhere, I guess. Yeah. So, so they actually do have this, this medallion, which is the giver's hand. Uh, Amy says, I like the three color c covers. It seems like they tend to be white, black, and red. Maybe you should come up with a stronger color palette. Aletha says, copper is awesome. That's what I meant when I said bronze. Oh, okay. Bit Green says, you can edit the color of a layer with the drop-down menu in image adjustments, hue, saturation. Yes. And Kate says, shiny is very cool. Oh, that reminds me. So uh, for, for each of these, I rendered out three different uh lighting styles and the reason i do that is because for a lot of technical reasons i'm not good enough to use like a super good renderer um but i can combine the different renders uh by you know if i like this side light but i also want the rest of the light i can set this to lighten and then you can see it's got that cool rim light to it that it doesn't have otherwise so uh, let's see Hmm. Yeah, so I like that one actually. So I, I can play around it and and I can uh, adjust the opacity, you know, to just kind of get somewhere in the middle or whatever. If you do that too much, you end up with like really flat, muddy lighting. But um, yeah, if, if you're careful with it, you can get pretty dynamic looking thing. Like for instance, I think uh, I like the rim light, but I think it's it's flattening everything because the highlight is so bright there and bright there. But if I lower this down, it just it brings enough edge to it that that it uh, makes it pop without competing for the uh, for the brow and the and the cheek. So anyway, yeah, that, this is this is probably where I want it. Uh, and yeah, I can add an adjustment layer on top of that um, levels layer, and I can go into the red. And I can crank it so that it's... Look at that. Beautiful. You said you wanted red. <laughs> no, not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so I, I'm aware that there's lots of ways to bring different tonality in here. I, I, think, I think we're still at the stage at which we're still... We're still working on composition. Yeah. Then comes color. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they do have interplay, so you can't completely ignore one for the other, but yeah. So Nasir says, the side light makes, uh, looks looks amazing, makes it look more mysterious. Demi said, agreed. Uh, Kate says, the side shadow was so tight. And Aletha says, no! I'm assuming she doesn't like the red. Um, <laughs> so I'm curious, were people liking uh, this guy uh, by itself? Self, or or just the mix you like the mix oh Aletha says to the silly red yeah uh, let's let's talk about let's talk about general proportions 
So I kind of wish there was a way to make the title larger. If yeah. if you well, lower, if you lowered I, the bust a bit. Um, so one way to make it larger is putting it on multiple lines, mm -hmm. as we see here and here. Mm -hmm. um, that that one's all fit on one, but they've they've squat or stretched it to to be bigger. Uh, multiple lines. It looks like multiple lines is what most people do. And yet I don't know how you divide that to make it look good. So you can delete the the. Uh, the scarred king. Uh, I, it's been the scarred king in my mind. Um, what does the the do for it? The book is about the scarred king. <laughs> <laughs> Amy prefers the rim lighting. Um, really, like the rim lighting the only? Uh, Kate around? Beeman says the self. Aletha says, I kind of like the dramatic shadow, but maybe with a little less shadow. Uh, Nasser said, Leela, so what's the metal made of, and what color is it? Uh, that's, you'll have to, you're in charge of that. Kate says, I swear I can complete sentences. The shadow is really nice, but it does lose a lot of the detail. Amy, I prefer the rim lighting. Demi says, don't stretch the font. <laughs> I agree with that, Demi. Um, okay, Nasir was asking what, what's the metal made of. So the metal for this bust is supposed no, to no, be metal. copper. I think he's talking about the, the metal that the, the oh, oh. giver's hand medallion. Yeah, so so that's actually kind of a plot point in, in the book is that... Um, he starts out with a particular type of medallion, which is, oh, actually I have a picture of it here. Uh, he starts out with, what, how do I hide these things from myself so well? Uh, okay, so he starts out with this medallion, which is, oh, come on. Arr. So it's this is called the giver's hand. I, I'm I'm modifying this a little bit where it, it's supposed to have a little a little jewel in the palm of the hand. So everyone on the island ostensibly follows this religion, and and they all have the giver's hand medallion. It's like the equivalent of wearing a crucifix or something like that. Um, through his adventure, he runs into people that are supposed to be his his vicious enemy, and I don't want to spoil too much, but. Through one way or okay, another, he comes home with the other medallion. Yeah, he comes home with a, a more a crude. Uh, go away! Why? Why is this here? Go away! I can't. I can't make it, that go away. Anyway, it's, uh, well, it it it's this one. It's this one. So um, it's it starts out as a as a very ornate jewel. He ends up with like a crude wooden. Uh, giver's hand medallion that is uh, has a has but the a one he seashell. starts out with is bronze, or at least it was in the book. We could always change that. It was gold. Well, gold is what he gets on his birthday when he turns eighteen, but we can change that too. We're gonna have to look into that. I'm I'm almost certain it was gold because iron is a super precious resource on their island. Iron is more valuable than gold, and he was going to get his upgraded iron one was my understanding well i'll have to look again yeah, we'll have to look who knows uh yeah so we're not going to stretch the font uh nasir says no the book is about the cleaners yeah so <laughs> <laughs> i agree that the but he's going to be on the second cover yes the the middle book the most important one so uh christy says i'm partial to the shadowed version of the bust against the gray background dotty says i agree with amy on the title placement Okay, let's. So what did Amy say about the title placement? Oh, she says the dash scarred king on different lines. Yeah, so there's there's many ways we can do this. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Where is the scarred king? Here it is. Okay, so we can do this. Me... And that lets us make the letters a lot larger, which I, you know, the, the, the larger the letters are, the better. Yes. 
Okay, so then we can go and make these guys really big. Uh, can't get it too big because we're no, we're right. You, you can't yeah. get too close to the edge that you run off, oh, or even touch it. Uh, now, book one, Exile, is hard to read. Uh, yeah, I, I took the um, the glow off of it. Okay, so there's one way to do it. Let's see. Uh, you should make this dude with super muscly shoulders for the cover, says Kate. Kate, go away. <laughs> Kate says, so you can see the medallion. Oh, okay. Nasser says, or make the tiny next to the letter S. Yeah, that's, that's what I tend to do with stuff. I wanted to try it this way first. Um, but yeah, we can... Oh. This this guy small. Also, get it, make it not a hat on the yeah. S. Why does that keep going? Aletha says that does look nice and more readable with the above scarred king. So there's that option. There is also, actually, let me just make a copy of this. Okay, let's try this as well, just for the sake of saying that we tried it. Mm, I don't like that. Why don't I like that? I don't know. Okay, Nasser says, no, Josh, delete it and rewrite it in a new text box. Bitgreen, Windows 10 image software is annoying, but I found if you click in the window, then move the mouse out of it, the bottom bottom black box leaves. Oh. Kate says, it has an adventure feel with the up, I think with the, with the da up there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what she said. Um. So, if it makes it more adventure feeling. Um, JJ says, Scarred King part should definitely be on the same line. Yes, that is, that is oh. probably true. And we, the, the, and the needs to show up sometime too. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting placement. Kind of, like, yeah, I kind of like that. Um, Aletha says, yes, the little V on the left top looked nice. It's little. This uh, glow needs to go down in size a bit. Yeah. And I'd still, yeah, it's still lower it a little bit. Lower? I mean, not the V. Oh. <laughs> lower mean... the Scarred King. Uh, so there's just a little bit more distance. University football. Oh, what am I missing? Nasser says, uh, okay. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Damon says the word should cover most of his forehead. You are selling the title in the book, not the picture. Damon says as big as possible. Nasser says highlight the letter S alone and make it bigger then make a new text box and type in the, then make it tiny and place it next to the letter S. JG says, ignore what I just said, this looks great. 
Uh, JJ laughs. Kate says, oh, after the top curve of S looked really cool. Just trying to get this stuff organized enough to be able to move it all at once. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this V really anywhere. It looks, it looks really weird being there. I think it's odd there. Oh, I liked it there. It's, oh, but, oh okay, so you're maybe. saying you think uh, in the center makes it feel like it's more part of the, the title. No, I think it looks weird being there because, because the S already pokes up so far and then right. this is like a weird hat on the S. Uh, so yeah, I could go in. I don't know if this is exactly what Nasir was saying, but I could go in and... Amy says, maybe you should make the bust smaller after you're done messing with the words. But yeah. I liked it larger. Yeah, well, we'll of course, I'm not the graphic artist. We'll experiment with it. Could do something like this. Um, I think it needs to be further to the right now. Like that. Mm. I can go down or up. So. All right. Uh, <coughs> um. I, okay, I, Amy says I like it to the right of the S. Demi says I disagree with the V on the top left. Yeah, me too. And so now the question is, should the S be in the middle, tower above, or sink below the Or line? be in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, okay, graphic designers, tell me where S's should go. Here we go, do we go high? Medium or low? Or is it just a bad idea to have it be a different size altogether? Uh, let me look at some of the other books that have done similar stuff. Uh, that one. Okay, so this one has a giant S for the Sanderson, but it also has this flourish coming off of it. I don't know if that justifies it in any way. Um, those S's look like they're... They're all larger. Well, they're, they're capitalized to be larger. Uh, Nasser Feed says, hi. H-I-G-H. Uh, -H. Oh, okay. Kate says, middle. J-J says, the V looks good in the middle, and the S should definitely not be low. Okay, so we've got to vote for not low. Okay, so here's that, that a big S that's in the middle. In the middle, yeah. yeah. Everything the same. Quite a big, bigger K. Yeah. Um, in general, what do you guys think about red on copper? I have a bit of a problem with it in that copper is kind of red-based to begin with. Amy says, I like middle with the V next to the right of it. Demi, if you're going to go with the bigger S, the higher of middle, but if you go high, it needs a reason for being there. Oh, okay. So kind of like the flourish on the Sanderson thing? Huh. I'm wondering if the word king shouldn't be just a scoonch further down from scarred. Sure. I'll give that a try. Uh, no, I mean, okay, king being uh, more space here. Yeah, that, that's what I was doing, but oh, it was really? also it was also moving the other one down. I'm not sure why. I must have something on. So that that is increasing the space, as you can see. Ah, huh? That's interesting. I also wonder what happens if we make uh, king a lot bigger. Does that? that influence the meaning in some way that we don't want.
Um, hmm. I think just based on what the story is actually about, it's not about him being a king. It's not about him becoming, well... It's about him becoming the kind of person who can become king. Yeah. I, I'm afraid if king is really big, it's going to give the impression it's about a guy ruling a kingdom. I sort not. of wanted Scar to be the same size as the word king. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think it's better. Okay. Um... Demi says then higher or middle. Nasser says maybe a darker red for Leela. <laughs> hmm. I like bright red blood. <clears throat> um, I wonder. Well, let me let me try a different glow effect, just to see what happens if rather than black we go to white. No. No? No. Okay. Well, Master, what do you think of that? Yeah, I, I, I think I prefer the black and red. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to have Tales from Talifar be a background element. It's not mm -hmm. important yet. Um, maybe at some point that will be the big draw. Yeah, somebody but... said the line shouldn't be touching the letters, and that's true. They should come close, but not touch. Yeah, they're not touching anymore. Um, well, that might be a little too close to the... I don't... I mean, what did I have to say? Um... JJ, I like the scarred being red. It is too confusing if the font is different colors. And Kate says, that's tight. King bigger is cool. King is a character goal that will physiologically pull us into wanting to see the character grow, mature, succeed, more than just being an actual king, I think. Amy says, I feel like the middle color is just a strange color next to the red. Hmm. The, the middle color? What do you mean? I think she means the the copper of the sculpture. Mm. The the red does something to that color. I'm not sure what she means. Uh, well, okay. In general, there's there's a lot of noise in his dreadlocks up here. There's a lot of highlights and shadows, and so it's just a noisy background for a title to go there. Ah. Um, mm. so, so one thing we can consider, well, there's, there's a couple ways you can deal with that. Let me, let me just do a brute force stupid way to do it Or we first. could, we could, yeah, but even lowering it a bit, you, you don't want the chin on the bottom. Um, hmm. I'm going to do a, a stupid way to fix this first. Nasser says, I think since Leela likes the color red, we have to find a way to make it work. Thank you, Nasser. Oh, wrong setting. Okay. okay. So, oh. so, but if you do that, you get that, you know, taken down, and then obviously you would want to change what's going on up here. It's more readable. Yeah. Yeah, that'll need to turn white or something. Actually, I'm or in a little band. Let's see. Um, Aletha says, "Oh God, da 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 da." Okay, you also have to make sure you give yourself enough space above and below for the bleed. Aletha says, yes, I like, uh, I feel like his hair obscures the title a little. Christy says, is there a way to make the metal color cooler? Tone it down a bit, at least where the title is, which is what you just did. Nasser says, Josh, try to have the letter outlined, but with no fill. Kate says, the gradient down makes it really pop, like that. 
Throw this at the top real quick so that we can see exactly where the bleed is. All right, so here's here's the bleed. Um, yeah, so tails from Talifar needs to go down a bit, and extremely obvious tagline needs to go up a bit. Yeah. And if Tales from Talifar goes down a bit, the title should probably also go down as much as the Tales from Talifar does. Yeah. Amy says, obvious computer gradients may make it seem too dot, 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 unprofessional. Yes, I, I agree with that. Um, what I'm using the gradient for is a placeholder, and then I would go in with a grunge brush and make it make it look not just like a, a CG uh, effect. So let's see, we're talking about moving all this stuff down. Oops, not you. Can I not? Oh, is this a raster object? It's not. Why can I not make it brighter? I cannot do what I'm trying to do. Which is lower the title? I'm trying to um, change. These guys, 32 bit, really? That's interesting. The paint bucket doesn't work in 32 bit. Just do it the old fashioned way. The, Kate says the bleed can significantly alter your composition while you're working. I've made that mistake a lot. Demi says, Amy, not if used correctly. Nasser says, Josh, how many displays are you looking at? I see your eyes looking everywhere. I'm confused. <laughs> Alita says, I like the gradient effect. It makes the title and author names pop out more. Amy says, I like the gradient but especially with the grungy texture in the back and the realism in the bust, it is too obviously computery. JJ says, can you make the red more blood colored? Kate Beeman says, would fatter letters look on the main title? Uh, on the, okay, would fatter letters on the my, main title look good? Uh, okay, so Nas here, I am using two monitors, and where are my grunge brushes? But tons of windows. Uh, did it, I think when I upgraded uh, Photoshop last week, it got rid of all my uh -oh. brushes. Um, hmm. so, so get more brushes doesn't get you more brushes? Uh, what? Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, well, I'll come back to grun grunging it up later. I just wanted to demonstrate just using a grunge brush to erase out parts of the of the fill to make it look uh, less generic. Okay, fatter letters. Yeah, um, I really like this font. This font is free and open source for everyone, um, which is really nice. Uh, I am totally open to experimenting and seeing what else is out there. Let's yeah. just... I still want to see more distance between the tales from Talifar and the title. Okay. Um, Kate says, oops. Kate says, omit the... Oh, 
omit the first look in the sentence. <laughs> I, I need to read this better. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and look at a bunch of different fonts for fun. Okay, so this is Trajan Pro. So here's nice and fat. Oh, I assume oh, that's what you oh. want. Oh, hey, you graphic designers. Do you, in Photoshop, is there a way to switch through your uh, fonts without having the... The box. Yeah, the box uh, inverting it. I actually, this is my favorite font, but I contacted the person and asked if they could do a slight change and they got like super mad at me. Um, so I can't, I can't use this font. Yeah, I mean, I have a trillion fonts. Alita says, just put book one, exile, right on his eye. Hmm, no. <laughs> Got a lot of Star Trek fonts. Yeah, I, the fonts is a rabbit hole that you can fall down really easily. <laughs> I've learned, especially if you have multiple people all... Uh, Amy says, what was the change? Uh, the change from what? Oh. Um, well, you said you wanted to change that alphabet that you, or that font that you Oh, write. the font, right. Uh, there's a few of the letters, um, like especially the S were just kind of awkward and since the scarred you know s is a major letter in the scarred king i i was like you know that this person obviously made the font uh it, you know could, would it be a big deal to make a version of the font you know let me pay you to make a version of the font that has a slightly different s and man they they just went off on me i guess it's offensive to ask someone to do anything slightly different than what they already did and Nasser says, what's the extremely obvious tagline? Uh, we were looking at the covers before, and a lot of them that were award winners had a tagline at the bottom that helped, again, convey what this book is so that the right reader will pick it up. You don't want a romance reader to pick it up and think that's what they're getting because of this handsome dude on the front. I love this font so much. But it's, uh, I don't know enough about it. I, I can't remember if I looked into it or not. Um, this one is called Caribbean Tool. Hmm. I don't know. That looks kind of like fairy to me instead Does of... Does it? Um, yeah. It could be a little fairy, a little pirate maybe. I, I, I think basically everything that I started to go down and was like, oh, I just love the aesthetic of uh, this. Jay said the fonts you had originally had a professional feel to it. Yeah. Demi said, if you just select the text layer, then it will have the box around it and it won't be highlighted. Okay, let me try that. Um, Kate says, you can pay people to tweak fonts, which oh, is what that. you tried. Yeah, that's what I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it you, you shouldn't ask someone who didn't make the font originally to tweak it. That is probably bad. But also at the top, after you select the text layer, it should say somewhere, show transform controls, and unclick that, and it will remove the box. Oh, which you just did. Um, that's pretty cool, too, but I think that's actually from a different uh, IP, or it's ripping off another IP. Dark Horse. Yeah, all the ones that got fancy in some way or another, uh, I would show it to someone and they'd say, oh, that makes me think of blah, and it was not what I'm trying to get people to think of. And whenever I stick with Trajan Pro, no one says, oh, that makes me think of something that's not. Yeah, so. yeah. What is this guy? That, that's pretty nice. I should that's make a close. Note of that. To what you already had. Yeah, it is. What's that called? Felix Titling? 
Yeah. Probably not different enough to warrant uh, switching, but I kind of like the 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 Trojan did make the C so skinny as as um. Mm. Yeah, I think all the ones that get really thick tend to be just stylized in ways that make it seem less less professional, less. Classy. <laughs> the box isn't there, so you're good to go, says Demi. <clears throat> Amy says, I personally find that taglines have to be very carefully crafted to reduce potential cheesiness. Yes. <coughs> Nasser says, Josh, take your time with the title font. Finding the right font is very important for the upcoming books, hopefully. Demi says, 100% agree. And you... I know that you have spent hours and hours on this. I've spent hours and hours on this. Um, I, I went so far as to... St I was just designing my own font, and I spent way too many hours trying to get... Uh, to learn various font-making programs. Um, let's see if I could find the font that I was designing for it. Um, oh, yeah, so... It was something along the lines of that. I like that. Um, I like it too, but the more I looked at it and the more I wrote it out, the more I was running into the same issue of... It just didn't feel as classy and professional. Ah, so, there you go. And so I was like, you so know you what? So you got a font that says pro on it. Yeah, I think I think as we're starting out in UIP, it's it's really important to to not be um, unprofessional looking. Ooh, I like that too. Lightfoot. It's easier to read. I'm gonna come back to that later. Yeah, a, a lot of times it's important to just. To, to think about it for right. a day or two. Let's come back to it. foot fluted. Sober. Yeah. And I managed to lose my place where I was writing all this stuff down. Speaking of being professional. You should put those little tabs on the side with titles on them. Yeah. I, I really should. Um, or, better yet, I'm just going to copy this as it is. And then I can have that copy and carry on with other. Aletha says, I like that one too. It's neat, but probably wouldn't work JJ without noises. JJ says, this one looks really nice as well. Nasser says, you don't need something to look professional. You just need something that has your style and the feels of story. Um, yes and no. I, I agree and disagree. <laughs> I think... I think you can push too far in one direction and completely ignore the other one. I'm trying to keep keep them in balance. Um, so yeah, I really like this light foot. I have a feeling, um, well, so, so specifically what I like about these kind of fonts is the, the pointies. Yeah. The pointies, like they get across danger and adventure without saying danger and adventure. Um, is it, is it so fantasy though, that it will make people expect wizards riding on dragons? That's that's the line I don't want to cross mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're not going to find wizards riding dragons in this fantasy story. Um, however, I also feel like the genre of fantasy has expanded so much over the past decade or so that high fantasy is very much its own subgenre now. Yes, it is. And so as long as we're not signaling really hard, hey, this is high fantasy, we don't have to worry about breaking expectations, I think. 
and high fantasy requires like those really medieval looking fonts or, mm -hmm. or lots of swirls and curls like this or where'd it go not that <laughs> <laughs> oh, it went away well whatever that one was oh. yeah this this is what like that to me says high fantasy yeah right. or historical it also fantasy. says totally unreadable too oh well, yeah in that sense it says nothing this yeah okay anyway um i'm gonna i'm gonna come back daddy says yes the pointy font looks nice yeah i'm gonna come back to looking at both trajan and um that other pointy one Perfect. Demi, there are plenty of free font sites that are for personal or commercial use. Oh, yeah. Where have you found these that you are using now? So the, what I have now is just stuff that has accumulated on my hard drive over the past 20 years. So I have no idea where most of these come from, and I have to go so research. Were any of them from the hundreds I gave you? Yeah, yeah. So we, yeah, we've spent years on and off going through all those sites and finding stuff and talking about what works and what doesn't and so far all of that has led me more and more back to the classical look i think um yeah i don't want to there we go papyrus um <laughs> I think, let me do this. Let me. Now, sir, I think designing your own font is a great idea and not very hard. Now, sir, it's very hard. <laughs> I tried. Yes, Since I tried Since it's too. only used for the title, like Game of Thrones have its signature font now, but before it was awful. Uh, you watch Game of Thrones, you'd know what he's talking about. Yeah. Where did this... Well, darn it. What happened to that font? <laughs> There's a font called Old Dreadful. <sighs> There's Lightfoot. Lightfoot, you... that's the one. Okay. I'm going to... I'm going to... Do you, you need to change the S to a yeah. light foot too. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this and see how it sits with me for a while while we work on other elements. Yeah, you need to uh, to try the other titles: the uh, the Melting Kingdom, a little magic, yeah. um, killing the siege. Let's see. Demi says, indeed, that way the title will look more like a logo. Um, JJ, what you have going on right now has some Metal Gear Solid 4 cover vibes, if you've seen that one. Really? Metal Gear Solid 4. So the one that came out before 5? I mean, all of them have Solid Snake scowling. I, I guess he kind of looks like... Oh, yeah. oh, he doesn't mean the letters. He means the... Okay. okay. Yeah, there's, it's a game series. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, lots of people wear dreadlocks. He doesn't have dreadlocks. He's just a scowling warrior guy. Oh. Um, so for, for the author name, do, I, I think most of the taglines were before the author no, name? No, so, well, they were different places. Let's, let's see where they were. I don't think I want it on the face. No, I, I don't think so either. See if I can find the ones with... Okay, so this one, it's at the very bottom. Author is at the top. Well, we know we saw them. <laughs> okay, here's another one. When you can't... And that's sort you, of in a bad place. When you can't, at the odds, change to T game. Yeah. Um, but also below everything else. There you go. 
Okay. And that one's between the title and the name, but it's also at the bottom. Everything's at the bottom. Yeah. It's also in a color that, that retracts it from the other information. So that's an interesting thought. Uh, Nasser says, laughing, I'm saying it's not hard in a sense that you don't need a software to make it writable. You just need to design the vector and place them manually. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Yeah, I, I feel like if I go through the works through the work of making a vector alphabet, not having that as a font available to me seems frustrating. Also, I hate working with vectors so much. Uh, uh, Demi says the magic of the pin tool. Yeah, it's the worst. I, I haven't worked in it in, with it in the this newer Photoshop. I should I should do that. I should see if it's still as awful as I remember it. But uh, anyway, so white, red for the title, white for the subtitle, white for the names, white for the tagline. Does that make sense? I feel like maybe the tagline should be red. Someone was mentioning making things more blood red. Hmm. That makes it really go away. Although, I, you know, we could give it an effect as well. Okay. Um, and we would want it definitely in a different font, something a little more, a little more, well, a little you know, more attitude. You don't want tons of different fonts Correct. on the cover. Yes, I my my rule of thumb from looking okay, at everything so was this three font, or less. Uh, this font is the same as that font. And this font. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure making it. Uh... Um, I was thinking one of the very I, I one of the very that, simple ones like this. I think just making it smaller. Well, and maybe uh, maybe an off white instead of bright white. I'm sure we can give that a try. Um, the the reason that. I don't want it in the same font as this is because it's, this is a very formal font. It has, uh, what is the word? The, the little things that stick off of the ends of all the letters. Um, serif. Yes. Serif. So you want a sans serif, I want a sans -serif. for the tagline? Yes. Uh, is there a reason? Yes. The um, reason is? The reason is all the, all the taglines that we saw were very attitude filled which to me conflicts with serifs. Serifs is like, here's a statement of, of fact okay. or, or you know, description of the world, and this is like attitude. That's the impression that I got from the other ones. Head, heads will roll, whatever will, you know, thing. And tonight we dine on orc Demi flesh, says, but that's not easy to, to do well. I think she's talking pin tool. Yeah. Amy says you could scan in your sketchbook page and trace it. Kate said you can fiber it out if you want someone else to design you a font for pretty cheap. Demi says still quite fidgety to do it yourself it, if you are not used to using the pen tool. Kate says sans. Kate says serif. Yeah, so sans serif. Hmm. Not bold italic. Huh. Why do these change the whole line, but this doesn't? Um. Well. Well, I prefer that one to the other ones, but I'm. Yeah. I'm not sold yet. I want to see what Nasser says. Did Nasser go away? He hasn't said anything for a while. I need to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. Oh. You take the wheel.
<laughs> um, yes. And I'm not an artist, and I'm not a graphic artist, and so I have no idea. Dottie says, oh, Nasser says, um, Josh, try lowering the opacity of the title. No, oh, why? Okay. Um, Dottie says, I never realized how much work went into making a book cover. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot. I definitely will have a better appreciation of my next trip to Barnes & Noble. Yeah, that's why good book cover artists charge thousands of dollars because it's so crucial to the sale of the book and there's so many elements to balance. Nasser says, so let's chat till Josh comes back. So what inspired you to write this novel? What inspired me was Josh had these drawings and Josh had this dream about he was going to make a media empire. He was going to um, <laughs> have have a book series that would have comics and games and movies and uh, uh, all kinds of entertainment attached to it and it would be cohesive and that was his dream and he talked about it for years and he talked about it and he talked about it and finally I said okay Josh let me make some content for you let me write the first book and we spent a long time writing the first book, which is now three books, uh, because we were sort of exploring our way through this particular universe and the manific uh, ramifications. And now what we do, now that we have this universe, we pick characters and then make a story about them. Yes. Um, Nasser said try blurring the opacity of the title hmm. and Kate said I suggest having the bleed showing while you're working on the title's tags oh, oh sorry that's not what I wanted it to do I didn't mean to bump the elbow there get rid of this part of the bleed that's interrupting everything. Okay. Yeah, that can't hurt. Okay, um, what were we looking at here? So, so yeah, that, that's a good advice because that shows you the D as a problem. Indeed. So, yeah, the, the bleed line runs through it. Kate says it helps to see when you're working on the comp, uh, which I assume means composition. Yeah. But I'm puzzled about lowering the opacity. I don't understand that advice. No, me neither. Let's see what happens when we do it. That's it. Leela, so are the cleaners the supreme race? Well, they certainly think so. Yeah, that's what's important. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. They call themselves the people. I know. They think they're the only... They know they service the Mars or whatever. Amy says, I like this font. I have to say that I don't like it with the opacity lowered. No. I think it makes it harder to see. However, adjusting the color, uh, not that much. Okay. That makes it harder to see too. Let me try something terrible real quick that if it works might lead to doing something um, illustrational. Yeah. Thomas said, much better, Josh. Looks great. 
Nas, uh, Amy says, Nasser, you should just marry one already. <laughs> So a lot of book covers still have bevel and emboss on them, and I feel like that's probably in poor taste, and I shouldn't do it. Well, but what it I read cool. on cover blogs is, yeah, don't do that. But gosh, it looks nice, you know. Um, Thomas says, okay, um, JJ, I really like the color scheme. The name pops out and is easy to read. And the bronze statue looks amazing with the grayish background. I feel like it has more identity now than with the yellow and brown. Thomas says, I like the red because it pops off the cover. JJ says, uh, map background earlier. So he likes the gray better than the, than the map. Uh, Nasser retracted his message. Ooh, okay. did you say something bad, Nasser? <laughs> So I don't know if like making it subtle, you know, accomplishes that like what's cool about it without being cheesy. Uh, <laughs> no, they eat food. It's true, but that's a that's a spoiler. Don't let people know that. Oh, Thomas Ream. You remember Thomas from Alaska? My friend in high school? Oh, yeah. Thomas? Oh! Yeah. Hi, Thomas. I remember Tom Ream. <laughs> Tom. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so if we... Uh, uh, so either Nasir or Demi or anyone else... This who, is really bothering me that this S is not... Uh, I'll, I'll fix that. Yeah, I know you will. Okay. It's just bothering me. So, so people who are in the know... Does having bevel and emboss, a subtle bevel and emboss, make your cover seem less professional, seem outdated, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Aletha says, I like the subtle. Was it embossing? Yeah. Thomas says, hi. Right. Amy says, I am still not happy with the bronze and red. I'm not sure why. Yes. Um, I... I am also somewhat uncomfortable with it. I'm trying to think of a better you, thing. You to think do with the it. colors clash or what? Right. It's not. No, uh, I think what it is is like if you wear if you wear an orange dress and red shoes. And that's a problem. Yeah, because it's like they're they're close they're close enough or they're too close without being perfect. So and you too think far it sets, away it sort of sets up a vibrating to be a match. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at a random other color. There we go. Perfect. Beautiful fuchsia. Hmm. Well, that's certainly visible, but I don't <laughs> like snot green. I mean... Well, but if you make it yellow, isn't that the same thing as as echoing so if we're if we're echoing we would go with this kind of a coppery right something like that um which which i think is a fine color but it it probably gets too lost in what's going on like see that's like almost perfect match for it okay um nasser said it's not the red it's the hue mm. Aletha said, I don't really like the red either, but I just don't like that red. Amy said the blue wasn't bad. Okay, let's look at other hues with red. So we can bring the darkness down. We can bring the saturation down, which, you know, turns it to kind of a gross salmon pink. Um, That's uh, coral. That's orange. You can slide it slightly more to the to the like purpley side or to the orangey side. Yeah, this is this is where not being good with color really bites me in the buttocks. Hmm. 
Amy says the blue wasn't bad, huh? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Blue is um. Is that dynamic enough, or is it too calm? The one guy said the old red popped. I like the way the old red Just popped. curious, have yeah. you tried variants of white? JJ, I don't like the text effect. It looks forced. Mm. Yeah, the bevel and emboss thing. Um, well, so here's here's white. Actually, bevel and emboss looks pretty cool on white. But I still don't know if I'm allowed to use bevel and emboss. You know, it's like I just happen to have enough graphic nerd friends who have communicated to me that Comic Sans and Papyrus are off limits. They're terrible. Don't ever use them. Only idiots use them. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's lots of others like that that I just I'm not aware of. Aletha says, I think just a little darker red. Debbie says, ha, definitely embossing and beveling is outdated. But sure, a very, very subtle use of it in some cases, it, I think she meant it can work. Mm -hmm. It's really where the graphic designer's job comes in in order to make it classy. Faster says, find a hue you like in Google and use the water drop tool to pick it up. Debbie said, or find a way to make it legible without using it at all. Yeah, I don't think it's it's illegible. I just like the, I mean, I, I, I like things that are beveled. <laughs> but I like this, this blue tinted white. So if you have white that's like a warm tint, it gives it kind of an ivory look to it. But when you go blue... It feels, I, I, I think because it's set off against the warm copper mm -hmm. of the piece, I think that's really cool. But then everything's white, and then do we make, uh, do we flip it so that the, the author and other stuff is red? And Amy said, I think most of the embossed effects nowadays are actually physically punched out of the paper on the covers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, um, or the or the text is actually created in a 3D package and rendered out, so it's not just a filter that's put over it, um, which I, I, I'm capable of doing that. Uh, I don't know that it's worth it. So I'm going to I'm going to go back to red for now. Um, I'm going to get rid of that emboss just because I'm so... By the way, Mordecai is here now. Hey, Mord. Um, I'm going to now make a copy of this. And a copy of this. I'm going to group these guys together. I still prefer the red, but I have to agree that that bluish white did pop. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to I don't know if it still pops as much without the bevel. Yeah, once you get the blue to where you're actually your eye is actually recognizing blue, I think then it I it, like it, it breaks it. Yeah, but if it's just a a cool blue white that's kind of neat. Nasser says, Josh, my professor says most graphic designers are full of bleep. Don't take others' words as unbreakable rules. Oh, yeah, I don't. Christy <laughs> says the patina green color was nice and relates to the copper. The white looks nice and is 100% legible. Yeah, I definitely like that about it. I don't remember, I remember seeing a mint green. I don't remember seeing a copper green. Yeah, 
Um, so, wh what I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> but I'm not sure. Can't what, take it. I'm gonna put this. I'm, I'm gonna not sure I want all the words to be white. No, I, I, I don't either. Um, uh, Amy says, I prefer the cool white to the red. Mordecai says, I like the white as well. Demi says, Nasser. Feed it second that some rules look better when they are broken. That's the beauty of our job. Aletha says the cool white is definitely great for being able to read it clearly. Okay, so subtle so bubble can and tail, can, the, can tales from Talifa, can that be red? I want some red on here. Well, uh, that, that's what <laughs> I was just getting to. I was going to say, okay, so, so let's... let's Okay. Pretend that we're going with this okay. title for now. Okay. If we do that and we go down to... JJ, the white title works too. It's really clear to read. Try the other words, Red. Yep. Um, I don't know if I like our names, Red, but I'm mind. just going to do it for now. How about Book One Exile? That makes it harder to read. It does. I don't mind. I don't mind the subtitle being harder to read. Um, I mean, at a glance, what someone at a store or in their on their library shelf is going to see is this and a face, right. and each book is going to have a different, interesting face, and that's going to be the primary way you tell the the books apart. Um, I don't know that, you know, Exile, the, what's the second one, Sojourn or something like that? Journey. Journey, yeah, and then, uh, I, I don't know that those particular words are super important to what we're trying to accomplish here. Actually, let me fix this real quick. Uh, this... Yeah, I, I don't like red. Let's try. Well, that's more of an orangey red that you have there now. Um, okay, Thomas had the same suggestion I did. What, what was that? Uh, make book one exile red. Yeah. So what happens if we go... No, that's not good. Uh... <laughs> Mustard. Well, I, I'm thinking, what if what if we get the tones from there? Uh, that that pulls it back in importance, obviously, um, but it also incorporates it more into the character. Hmm. What do you guys think? Demi, one thing I still suggest is not using too many different fonts for the rest of the text. Yes. Yeah, I, I thought that. So we've got three. Two, two. We've got three fonts right now. And I think that might be one too many. Yeah, I was shocked when I was looking at these award-winning uh, books. Okay, that one's not a good example. That one's got two. I, there were several that had four fonts on really? them. Yeah, and I was I was shocked. That so is... there's one, two, three. Um, those are probably the same. So that's probably two. That's two. One, two, three. I think that's the same. It's just a lot smaller. Yeah, could be. Anyway, I yeah. the 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 principle is the the point of having different fonts is to is to differentiate 
conceptual uh, well, concepts. Uh, the point of keeping them as few as possible is to make it as cohesive. uncluttered and cohesive uncluttered. as possible. Yeah. Uh, the crazy slowpoke said maybe a little lighter red with the black outline. Amy says you could even go with a darker color. Nasser said, Josh, try using rectangle shapes and place the words on top of them. Lower their opacity first. Uh, let's see, I think he means something like this, where I do a thing like this. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, you can't use fill tool at 32 bit. Why? Why? No, that's not what I meant. No. I don't. I don't see the point. Um. Oh, is he trying to say uh, have the title be in a color band that's on top of the picture behind it? I, th I think so. Be more specificness here. Rectangle shapes, place the words on top of that. Lower. Okay, so I don't know if you're saying to lower the opacity of the of the, the rectangles band. or the or the words. Nasser, no, Josh, there's a shapes tool. Oh. Yeah, I've never used the shapes tool. Uh, let's see, that is in here. Rectangle tool. Boop. Ta-da, rectangle. Yeah, I don't know what to do with, uh, with, with the rectangle once I have it. I could change the color. That's interesting. My eyes hurt. Whoops. Oh, are you kidding me? Do you have to use a special different tool to move these? Ugh. Oh, Photoshop, you're killing me. Why make me switch to a different tool to move something that I just made with the tool? Ah. Uh, yeah, so uh, this is a thing. Uh, let's see, is opacity on here? Uh, I don't see opacity, but I can turn it down here. Okay, uh, yeah, I've seen books where the title is on a band over the picture, and because you lowered the opacity of the background, you could see the picture behind. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure that's a good thing here. Yeah, I'm digesting it soon. Nasser says bake it for example black and lower the opacity to 60%. Gotcha. That's kind of what I was doing with the fade. Um, oh, with the gradient. Yeah, with the, with the gradient. Uh, this is this is a more bold approach to, to doing that. Um, I mean, that definitely makes it pop out more. I don't know that it needs to pop out more when it's white, but uh, let's let's look at the red version on that. Amy says, because vector's got to be special. Mm. Oh. oh, this is in the folder. Um, so that does make the red, uh, it makes me more comfortable with the red as it sits on the copper. Um, I don't know if the hard graphic element of horizontal lines. Yeah, that, that bothers me this. is adding a, a level of busyness to it. 
Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of covers I've seen with that and why they did that. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think any of the ones that I grabbed as reference <laughs> yeah, that's do that. Yeah, now make the words red for Leela. <laughs> that's just a sweetie. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think I'm just really drawn to the white text over the red. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> not that. <laughs> Uh, Josh, make the text opacity like 90%. Oh, so you're saying with the... I thought it was the bar that was supposed to be... Uh, well, it, it can be both. Well, good. So... Not, yeah. not caring for that. Yeah, I, I, although again, my opinion is not worth a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to, to me, the rectangle fights with everything that is organic and swirls, and yeah, it, it's just it's it's more of an organic feeling, and that gives it such a rectilinear thing to it. I, you know, the the lines up by Tales from Telfar are all, and then there's the. The fact that all the... But I suppose he could suggest uh, taking those lines off tails from Talifar. But I think I think that says this is a something else. Yeah. And is good for a series title thing. Yeah. Let's try putting that in copper. I know there's a there's a better way to to do that, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, um, so what happens then if we do the tagline like so? And then these guys. Amy says, I didn't really like the rectangle. Amy says, I think we're getting into the realm of too many colors. Well, not anymore. <laughs> this, is getting, this is getting very monotone, what I just did here. Um. Well, no, because that's a color, that's a color, that's a color that... Um, no. you're, you'll probably make this the same as that. Yeah. And... This is a color. This is different from that and from that. And so we're looking at... No, it's not. I, I color picked on it, so they would all be the same. But Book One Exile looks really different. That, that that, that, that's like... because this is on a darker background. It just it fools the eye that way. I mean, I, I could compensate, but... Amy said it's better now. Master said you could make the rectangle section over his eyes, copy and paste, and then make the full picture blurry. I have seen that. Mm. You know, um, no. I'm not sure that's what I want to do here. But it'd be interesting to see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Amy said, I prefer the monochrome to the red. kind of optical illusion because in this big one it's like he's looking at me and and the thumbnail it's like he's looking that way 
Oh, maybe because you don't see the highlight in the eye when it's when it's really small. Huh. Yeah, that's probably it. Christy said, I would buy this book as it stands right now. <laughs> Thank you, Christy. that much not that much but a subtle amount hmm. yeah, kind of like that so without blur with blur I really like this, but I also think that I have a weakness as an artist of being too drawn to um, to, to monochromaticism. I think it's gorgeous. Yeah, I think it's gorgeous too. Now the next question but is... But I mean, it's it... your fault I think it's gorgeous. It's your genes that make me think it's gorgeous. So. Okay. <laughs> But the next question we ask is, does this convey excitement and adventure and danger? Yes. Yes. I think that's what's bothering me more than the monochromaticism. It's, it's, a, it's, it's beautiful cover, but I'm not sure it says adventure yet. It's To me, it says professionalism. It says classy. Yeah, it doesn't say action, adventure. Well, that's your tagline. Your tagline mm. is uh, a world of discovery and pain. That's what I figured your tagline was. Okay. I'm sorry. What? We'll, we'll, we'll put that terrible one in for now. Okay. A world of discovery and pain. Uh, yeah, that's a bad word. But, okay. Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know how you differentiate fantasy and... Aletha says, I'm thinking with the red conveys more adventure. Yeah, it really does. Here, let me try this real quick. This but, will, I mean, this, everybody's right. This is gorgeous. Um, yeah. This will probably look like Christmas time, but I'm going to try... What is soft maroon? What? Maroon or purple, like a soft... For what? The, instead of the red. I mean, the red's cool, but I'm just saying. Oh, like... Yeah, it's really hard to not end up pink. What happens if I... JJ says, can you make the tails from Talifar part red? Yeah, Amy I... says, I'm thinking of adding some sort of diagonal element like swords or spears or something. Um... Well, we have the diagonal scar. I think what... Demi says, I think the subtle blur works because it breaks a bit of the harshness of the image behind all the letters. Josh? Crap. Yeah. I think... Keeping it white is better because it's the next thing for your eyes to go from the title, which is white, and it stands out. Yeah. And then it goes straight to the white, which is what it is about, and you want them to see that. And I think that's an equal match because it's equally important. Your eyes going to go to the hmm. white, white. So white with a red border. Instead of a... Yeah, so so when it's bright red, it's, it's definitely Christmas. It's a candy cane. When it's darker red it's kind of muddy and just yeah it's yeah it was just an idea it was an idea that did not work okay Nasser so Leela are you looking for the book cover to be more like an art than a picture and Damon says the word should never be a secondary color when your image is dominated by a secondary color brown okay uh, well, let's see what happens if we do the complementary color then. Well, white's a primary color, so is red. Isn't that what he's saying? Uh, no, he's he's saying like the the copper of the of all the text that's not white is the same color as the image behind it. I just thought of something cool. What's that? What if most of the the whole image, like everything, was pretty black? Uh huh. And then the gold parts, your, the, 
I know it's beautiful artwork, but it shines through just a little bit. Uh, like actually having gold on the cover? Um, I don't picture, no, no, no. Picture painting having the whole, the whole cover black, right? Okay. But then that bright image of the copper of the sculpture started like coming through. Opaque and maybe like high contact. So the uh, Damon like, said they're basically the invisible. Then out. he said red and brown shouldn't be used together anyway. Yeah, red and brown. Yeah, I think that's what I was uncomfortable with. Why is this not changing my text? Okay. No, not purple. Oh, I didn't know you were talking about that. Uh, David says if you want it to pop, use blues. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm going towards the complementary colors. Um, I'm not sure how far I want to saturate those complementary colors. Well, uh, here's... <laughs> so white is going to pop the most. A complementary color is going to pop, like, almost as much. And so I don't know if I want everything competing for equal uh, attention. What about a lighter gray, like almost white, but just a little? Yeah, that's why I'm kind of trying blue or gray. Or actually a little bit more yellow, just so it might brighten it just a little bit. But since it's small, because you can't see it, it's pretty small. I'm kind of liking this, this blue, this blue gray. Um, I just, yeah, it's going to be, let's see what happens when, oh, oh, here's an idea, probably a bad idea, let's try a, a dark, let's see, dark desaturated blue, and then do the outer glow as white, what does that do, ah, okay, well, let's make that outer glow not crazy, giant. Could Tales of Talifar, is that, I'm so far away, is that what's under the scar team? It's good that you're far away because you're seeing it like a thumbnail. I know, and um, that's what I was going to, so after. No, the Tales from Talifar is at the very top. What I'm muck mucking with is book one, Exile. Okay. Demi says, so I agree that is... bright, red does, bright red doesn't work for this. Amy says, or you can make the background a darker color. Thomas says, how about book one, Exile in Copper and Tales from Talifar in Blue? I have a question. Josh. Yes. I know. What if this part was like right there, small or like. You mean book done, one exile? Done. Yeah, and it fit in the same border. So it's not going over his face more. It's it's almost like it's one whole image together. But it's just matched in that that part of the Scar King. And even put one underneath book. Now you're going too far. Mm, no. Bring it <laughs> over. I like that. Hmm. And if it was even white or a little bit darker white or something to pop it out, I like that. I think it's pretty. Yeah. Now it's not Mordecai with face. is saying control Z, control Z. <laughs> <laughs> I think he doesn't like what you're doing. Uh, the, there, there's one thing I would need to try. I would need to move yeah. King over a little bit. And Damon says color samples from the background gray. The light part? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <clears throat> an interesting thought. Um, I hate it there. I, I know you hate it there. Because it's covering one of the really great aspect, like highlights of his face. Like that corner, that <laughs> edge. Nasser said, Scholar needs to be the focus of the camera. Book two, Nasser, wait. <laughs> Amy says that white would work, but I'm not sure I in think, reference to what. I okay. think white like that. Does t Tell me if it makes it better for you if this is like up a little bit and smaller. Nope. I think that would still look better stacked on the side. It keeps your, because it's obvious, you don't have to, your brain can do less work and see it, and then it's not in front of like that. I don't think it makes your brain do less work, because then you're shifting from 
line, 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 two line, two line. You don't read two line, two line. You under, your brain understands it as one image. I just think it looks better and it's taking up less of the picture. You just really like this spot on his yeah, head? Yeah, I think, I don't think you should keep going down, down, down over his face. That's like a really amazing line on like the highlight. The brow line? Yes. That it's, goes down it's, like that. It's actually one of the things that really pop out, especially after, because it's under the title scarred key. Your mm -hmm. eye is just going down and it draws it into the picture. Into the scar? Into the whole, yeah, into the picture, the whole thing. So if you made king over and the bottom of the K was pointing to the scar, is that what you mean? Nope. Something, well, okay, so Heather wants, Heather wants this, Book which, and then okay, I'll, I'll because she's so vehement about it, I'm going to try this. I'm just going to see it. <laughs> I'm gonna put, like, really try it. Okay, I'm going to really try it. And then if you need to move King over just a little bit. Yes, I do need to move King over. Much. David says, like, that is a good idea, Heather. Put the K under the C. There we go. K under, yes, that's exactly what I was going to do. Okay, well, I'm glad we agree. Now we don't have to be divorced. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I think this marriage is going Marriage to saved. After 12 years. Oh. Uh, oh. Hmm. This is, this is the downside to having them broken up into different Carl says, parts. Heather is right. JJ, I like that placing. Dash says, hey guys. See, that's perfect. And I think making the book Excel, whatever, just a little bit bigger. I like that white outline. You can't really tell because I'm kind of far away. And now I can see it. I can see this on a shelf decently far away when I'm looking. I have more trouble seeing it. Well, that's because I think the white part. Let me, let me try putting this far. back to being similar to the Scarred King part. Um, I like that. Okay. Actually, I can probably lower that a bit and then do the outline. Amy says, hi, Dash. Oh, right. David says, listen to your better half. <laughs> hey, that uh, advertising degree is really paying off after like That's 15 funny. years. Look at me. <laughs> ah, what yeah. happened? Uh, it was so good. It, and then it went, but went bad. That's what she said. Um, <laughs> black. Be black. Okay. It's like it got reset somehow. JJ said, uh, Master, okay. Master says, with tiny words, I think letters should not have an outline, just a fill. JJ says, there you go. Okay, so basically I knocked the outline yeah. back so far that it's practically not there. That looks still. really good, how it sticks out. I don't know if it's the purple or the blue thing. Yeah, it's a little but too I'm little looking too at saturated. it needs to be or a little bit warmer. Demi says, yes, no outline. See, that's what I was kind of saying earlier, but now that it's up above, think it still looks good but I'm probably a little biased <laughs> Amy says I think the black outline sort of obscures it a bit Obs obscures the book one part I think it's sticking out good. Oh, I also well, wonder if it needs well, it doesn't need the colon if there is a separate um, if, if it's on another well, line, right? Hmm. Well, I think it should just because if you, when you start doing the list of the books and book two, book three, right? Yeah. You're yeah. probably going to have the title and you're going to have them together. Book one, colon, exile. Like you're not going to stack it like that. Uh, yeah, we should think about it because book two and its journey, which is longer than exile. Right. And so how will it fit there? Because we want to have... Well, I was just messing with the kerning to get it to... Yeah. Or is kerning okay. the side to side? One of them is vertical. And I was messing... And then, and then the third one is book three, proving. And... Mm -hmm. You could still do that does by that, the Will that over. end up running into the bleed as we try to... 
No, because you could always play with the size of, of the top or the bottom line to get it where you want it. Um, mostly, I'm upset that I can no longer select that without accidentally selecting Scarred King. And on a different layer. JJ says, can you make the tails from Talifar gold? And, hmm, I'm not oh, sure. What oh, because you can't really see it. She wants it. I, I think I would agree because it's. Or just I, I don't mind it being backgrounded. Mm. Um, and well, it doesn't look bad. Yeah. Because it's the same color as the border. Is that right? No, that's not a border. That's just showing where the bleed is. Oh. So I just selected oh, a, a color from a highlight. No, no, I should I should take that off real quick now that we That's know. better. That book one exile still needs to stand out a little bit more. I don't know if it just needs to be whiter than yellow or cooler or Definitely don't want to have too many tones going on in the in the letters. So I brought it I brought it warm. So let me put it back to cool like the rest of the white is. Dash says, what about the book one text on the bottom? Uh yeah, let's do a quick test. So we'll take this and put this one down here. Yeah, so that's how Brandon Sanderson's oh. uh I'd make it one line then. Yeah. <clears throat> That's good too. Oh, I like that. And keeping it the same color as the Scarred King is kind of crazy. We lost the bleed line. Okay. Dash says, I feel like putting text near his hair causes a lot of traffic, which is why he suggested putting it down there. Yeah, yeah, I like it down there. Yeah. I didn't know that was an option. I think I do too, because that also allows for, di you know, no. uh, different numbers of letters. Aletha says, uh, okay, wait a minute, I gotta go back up here. Nasser, Leela, how do you describe Bobak's character development? Because so far in the pages I've read, he seems weak. Well, just hang in. That is the point of a character arc. <laughs> <laughs> Aletha says, the bottom looks nice. Damon says, design by committee also ends up with bland work. Yes. Damon says, so just make sure you like it. Yes. The world of moving that stuff there, I don't mm -hmm. like that. No, yeah. me neither. I'm experimenting. No, I, I oh, think okay. I prefer that between right, right between the names and right that. Yes. Ah, oh, thank you. That's what I've been saying the whole time. Either that or on his nose, honey. How about Christy? Your last name is hard Ooh, to read nice. where the highlight on the bust is. So yeah, the O on the form. The O and the R. That yeah. way, if it falls over upside down, you can still read <laughs> a little bit. Get a hint of what it is. If the book falls could, on the floor upside down. Yeah, yeah. At, at Barnes & Noble or on Amazon, you don't know. Okay. So if, the, the reason I wanted to try something different uh, with this was because it's author names and then a uh, tagline, but, the, but it almost feels like the authors are saying this. Does that, does that make sense? Like, it feels cheesy, like... Rose Foreman and Josh Foreman say, a world of discovery and pain. <laughs> so put it above your names and drop your name down. And maybe even put your names on the bottom and put exile up. But yeah. I don't know if that's going to, if the length of it all is. Yeah, that's weird. And then move that's every, weird. I think, what if your names were like on the very bottom? Like if Th This is as low as we can go with the oh. bleed, I think. But if you make them smaller, a little bit. Honey, we get top billing. <laughs> and then a world just a little bit bigger. I kind of feel like book one exile needs to be on the very bottom if it's not going to be up there. Because it's kind of book ending conceptually. Yeah, well, okay. Another thing we could do is have 
Josh Foreman, next line, Rose Foreman, you know, and then you're centered, book one exile. Sure, let's give it a try. Um, a little bit more under the chin. Oh, hmm. Too many lines. Now we start running into that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, making book covers is hard. I liked it better how you had them stacked when you put the XL on the one. I mean, on the lower part. Yeah, to, to the comment about design by committee, that's to me, that's kind of a, a skill that I've built up over the past 20 years of working in game development is learning is you you take what everyone says and you instantly yes and it so you action on it you say okay let's see what that's like and then you're a, you, but you're also open to pivoting back and forth constantly and most importantly after the committee is gone then you, you sit down <laughs> it, well you've been influenced by what the committee has said right so that's um, what Bo Jackson did on their... Bo Jack talk. Horseman, yeah. Bo Jack exactly. Horseman. Is Christy yes said, and. I find it more helpful to have the number of the book on the spine rather than the cover. I don't know why I couldn't go both places. Yeah. I'm saying that a, this as a book hoarder that shoves books into nooks and crannies. Yes. Nasser, Josh, so the printed book's going to be hardcover or paperback? I'd say both. Um, Amy Howe, or you could put the names where the book won was next to King and moved King over to the left. Book. So you put it, yeah, move King so that it's more under the sea. And then that, we, we did that. We did that. That's what, that's what I was this saying. guy is up here. But she is she saying put the names though up there instead? But if the King was further over, then book one exile could be on one line. Oh, oh, I see. OK. That's what I was I'm, well, OK. But well. I still like it stuck. Well, Honey, I wanted to hear it from Amy, not from you. <laughs> uh, okay, so can, can I do this? I think I could do this. So if I backspace, it goes up to that line. Um, do I have to make a different? Okay, let's do this. Control X. Okay. Make a new layer. Control V. Uh, Mordecai, a paperback would be cheaper. Amy Howe, I was saying the author names. Um, we're having cross. Cross talk. Cross talk. Um, yeah, well, first comes the ebook, I and the paperback. I want hardback to be available later for collectors and Josh has is arranging to have an audiobook made too. Oh, we're gonna so try. I'm, so I'm looking at four four versions. Yeah. All right, where did my book go? All right, fine. We'll use this one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dude, that's not going to work. Well, not not that exact size, but actually, let me put that back. Here's the good mm -hmm. one. Okay, so I purposely spread this out. Let's go back to normal. Nasser says, oh, wait, I'm going, I'm going. Demi, I think because the Scarred King's face is not particularly angry or showing much of an adventurous side, he does look stoic, though, and determined. Nasser, no, I want a hardcover of a collector. <laughs> Demi, so trying to get the adventure to come out just from the text isn't going to work because the feel will clash. Does that make sense? 
Mordecai says, I see a lot that a lot of people will put book one on the spine and not on the cover. I catalog enough of them. Really? <laughs> okay, Nasser. JJ says, this looks like a legitimate computer game cover. <laughs> Amy, Amy, I was thinking book one on the bottom and the author's next to the king. Huh. Well, that's a different idea. Uh, I wasn't listening. I was, I'm trying to figure something out real quick and then I will listen. Oops. And Damon says PFF trade is best. Mordecai says that looks nice, but I'm not sure what he's referring to. So was it Amy who brought up a diagonal element to... No, I don't know. I can take a picture. Um, okay, so then you de-opaque that, and so you end up having this. Hmm. Um, why but I thought you didn't like red and bronze. Oh, I, I don't. Uh, why a diagonal thing? Uh, to get a sense of, of action and movement into mm -hmm. the... Um. Well, they talked about putting another figure in, like a spear or a medallion or something, to give it mm. to show what it is. Yeah. Arrowhead or something. <clears throat> so having having a map in the background gives a sense of adventure, right? I think um, so. This but maybe particular we need map it to be a different color. It's not so great. Um, well, it, it doesn't, it doesn't need, I could just desaturate it. Can right. it. Do you want me to tell you what Justine had said on my post, but it was like almost an hour ago? <laughs> sure. She said, so with the original picture that Leela posted, right, earlier. Uh, Amy like, says, I'm just spewing out ideas just to try things. Dash says, ooh, the red is nice. Tim says, I like that red. Amy Howe says, diagonal is really cool. Okay, so Justine said, agreeing with the comments on his original post, the author name's placement upsets the balance for the, for that, so I won't bore you with suggestions. Anyway, she said, the line spacing of the third line needs to be the same as the first and second. Yeah, all of that is just outdated. Okay. Can't use that. Um, I don't know why I have stupid lines on here. I don't like this tool. It's full of things I don't understand and I'm afraid of. Let me try doing something like so. Hmm. Yeah, much. I think I'd rather it didn't go through the eye. It's, the it's, eye. it's going behind. Oh, right. Well, this is going to make it look like Empire of the Rising Sun, but <laughs> yeah, multiple starbursts, that's not too great. Hmm. Oops. Nasser, maybe the shape of the hand. Dash, it feels like he's off to war. Amy, I think the hand might get lost. Yeah, putting another graphic element back there is pro uh, or a representational graphic element I don't think would work. I think but I I did feel like the diagonal shape did bring something. I can't believe I can't use a fill bucket in 32 bit. What? I, this is the latest Photoshop and the latest, greatest uh, computer hardware. There's no reason I shouldn't be able to do that. I think, Amy says, I think the singular diagonal looks better. Yeah. Yeah, definitely instantly uh, went away from multiple ones. I, I'm worried that red 
behind it is such a, I mean, red is just so vibrant and eye drawing. You don't want to draw your eye actively away from the focal point, which should be title face. Well, you'd be saturated it enough. Yeah, maybe, maybe more that. More of a hint than a. Um... Yeah. How far can we take that? Oh, well, then now we're into pink. Yeah. Which is not good. I I do feel like it sets off the copper nicely, which which is weird because when it was in text, I I really didn't like it. Um, Amy Howe. Uh, oh, JJ Red Scar in the background. Okay, I, I'm not going into this. Nasser, not on the back. I was thinking over the Scarred King and lower the opacity. JJ, red scar in the background. Amy, maybe a touch lower. Whoa. Well, that's certainly bold. Amy, I disagree with Nasser. About the red overlaying. Yeah, uh, I just like that. Covers it. That looks horrible. It's not that it covers up all the pretty parts. I think that I think I'm probably at a point where I just need to to come back to it with fresh eyes later. JJ says over looks weird. I kind of liked it, especially when you lowered the saturation down. Yeah, um, I feel like it uh, over fights again. Again, it's okay. fighting with the organic forms of the of the bust. Hmm. I need to, I really need to figure out who else is using this font because I guarantee you that some other big oh, IP I've seen is it. using it. I know, I've seen it. I mean, well, it's not a big deal if multiple other like authors, you know, use it. But if it's something like Dungeons and Dragons, all manuals use it or right, something like that, right, you want right, to stay, right. stay away from it. So. Nasser, maybe a thinner line and goes over his left eye, but use the shape tool to make the line. Yeah, well, you know, if the shape tool was something I understood, maybe I could do that. But it keeps putting outlines, and I don't see where to make it not do an outline. Here's a custom shape tool. What does that do? Oh. <clears throat> there we go. Perfect. Ah, where'd it go? Oh, I accidentally put it in that folder. Amy, I still disagree with Nasser. I think we have a fight going on. Fight, fight. You make that arrow bigger so it's like covers everything. Yeah. But. Just how about if the whole cover is just pure red? Mm -hmm. Now it looks like it's censored. <laughs> no scarred king. Um, Demi, look at the top. Demi, it says stoke. What does stoke mean? Uh, probably stroke. Okay. Uh, I mean, there's all these various line options. I don't know how to say not. Oh, there's stroke. Oh, okay. Where? 
Um, it said, okay. It, you want to do the stroke? There, there's oh, stroke, stroke options. Up. Yeah, there's dotted, dashed, solid, and sorry, no none. Um, is that none? Ah, that's none. Okay. Okay, so Nasir was saying smaller over the left eye. Nasser said, Amy can disagree with me anytime. She's more talented. That's a great community that we have here of humble people. They don't speak for me. Yeah. <laughs> I seem, I don't know. It seems like it's battling with the other elements. Yeah, I keep thinking it's battling as well. Yeah. I, I think Demi it's a... says, oh, okay. Uh, Nasser said his left eye, which would be the one with the scar on it. Oh. Demi says, at the top, it's always there when you're using the shape tool, put it on 0px. Demi, or none. Yeah, this, this is the point of diminishing returns where I just got to go away and come back later. Um, yeah, this has been super fun, though. Has this been fun for you? Yeah, actually. Yeah. So uh, hopefully whenever uh, my mom comes up, we can we can do live streams like this. It'd be good. I, I really want to do a creature design workshop with you next time. I want to just be working in ZBrush, and we can talk about the design of, a, of uh, the toothy creature. I want to oh. work on that guy. So. That'll I be, have got to come up with a better name. Yeah, they probably shouldn't be called Toothies in the final novel. All right, that's fine slang for some people in the world to refer to them as Toothies. That's, that would make sense. Uh, yeah, so so we'll leave it for here for now, and I'll, I'll be posting stuff on my social media as, a, as I work with it some more. And, uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys all got to meet my co-author. Um, and, well... A collaborator. Collaborator. Yeah, I, I hate calling her a co-author because I wrote what, like five or ten percent of the. Of the novel. Well, yeah. Well, you 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 make the direction of the story. Yeah, I do direction. You High sometimes level direction. choose the character. Yeah. And you take all the fight scenes and make them twice as long and twice <laughs> as intense. <laughs> That's the hope. And sometimes you rewrite the chapters that leave out what you told me to put in and I forgot. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, it is definitely a collaboration. It's, it's good. But, yeah, I, I, hate for, I would hate for people to think that I write half of these novels. That's definitely not the way it works. She does most of the hard work. So, um, anyway, yeah. So, uh, join me again. I, I, I may do one tomorrow afternoon. It depends. I burnt my fingers with electricity the I'm other not day. I'm looking at that. Yeah, they kind of look like uh, like barbecued hot dogs. And you but... might need a date day with your wife. Oh, yeah, and I, I may need to take my wife out at some point and treat her like a wife. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Play, we're playing it by ear, as always. If, if I don't see you again this weekend, we'll see you on Wednesday, as always. And uh, signing off. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.